ABC Sports presents college football. A Pac-10 matchup. Unbeaten Arizona State with its first road trip of the year. Comes to Pasadena for a meeting with the UCLA Bruins. On New Year's Day, Northwestern lived a dream. They made it here to the Rose Bowl where they were beaten by USC. Right now, another dream is unfolding in the desert of Arizona. In Tempe, Bruce Snyder and the Sun Devils with the story of the year. The shellacking of Nebraska, 19-0 at home. And unbeaten in the Pac-10 at 2-0. and and dreaming of coming back here on New Year's Day to play in the Rose Bowl. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody, with a coach, Dick Vermeil. I'm Brian Musburger. Nice to have you along with us for a look at these Sun Devils to see if we can find out just how good is this team anyway. <laughs> one thing for sure, we know the play of the year in college football, and here's the author, Jake the Snake Plummer. It's etched in your memory if you're a fan of Arizona State. You've seen it so many times, but you can always see it again. Keith Poole is still all alone. <laughs> the only touchdown, and it was to be enough. Three safeties. But, Dick, let's talk a little bit. You've studied Jake the Snake. I have. What do you see about him now? Well, you know, he's been around for a long time. He's an experienced player, and a lot of nice things have been said about this young man. Now being touted for the Heisman Trophy. You know, I really believe he deserves all the praise and the recognition in regard to the Heisman Trophy. But of all the things that I like in this young man is his ability outside the pocket. He is very dangerous out there. He can not only run well out there, but he, he maintains poise, concentration downfield. He doesn't lose sight of where the offender, the offensive players are, and he knows where the defenders are. So he, he's an excellent football player. Well, he has the experience edge on the UCLA Bruins starter. Here's the sophomore, the left-hander, Cade McNown. Now, you can see the McNown. He played pretty well against Tennessee. That was a game that the Bruins lost early. Did not have a good outing against Michigan, however, Coach. Well, right now, that's sort of his M.O. Last year, he started some games as a true freshman. Here he is really a true freshman again because it's a new offense. This is his fifth start in a brand-new offense, more sophisticated. They're asking him to do more things. Therefore, the reasons may be for his inconsistency. But if they're going to be in the ball game today, he has to come up with a big game because I know Arizona State's game plan and they're going to dump the responsibility on him to beat him. Well, he knows the game plan because he spent part of last night with the coach in his fifth year, Bruce Snyder. What a job he's done. And in his first year at UCLA, there is Bob Toledo. Boston Market, the place that made hot hand-carved Boston Carver sandwiches famous, proudly announces the new $4 chicken carver combo. <clears throat> A chicken carver, side, and regular soft drink for $4. Hurry in for a chicken carver piled high with real cheese on a bakery roll, plus a freshly prepared individual side and a regular soft drink for just 4 bucks. The $4 chicken carver combo, only at Boston Market. Hurry in now. Offer ends October 20th. Save some hot water. Too late! Honey, turn up the heat! It is up. Please let it be him. Please let it be him. Please let it be him. The gas-fueled complete heat system from Lennox. It's him. Virtually unlimited hot water and comfortable home heating in one unit. And it runs on economical natural gas, so it's super efficient. Yes! The Lennox complete heat system. Not just heat, complete heat. Yes! Clean natural gas. Think what you'll save. trucks on the road. There's a global company that can help you reach overseas markets as if they were right next door. A company that can speed packages across the Atlantic or the Pacific for less than you'd probably pay to send them across town. The U.S. Postal Service offers global priority mail around the country and around the world. No one delivers like the U.S. Postal Service. 
Unusual to see Arizona State in their traveling white jerseys. This their first road game of the year back deep now for the Bruins. That is Jim McElroy on the left hand side and the freshman from Phoenix Keith Brown on the right. The Sun Devils were unsuccessful in recruiting Keith Brown so he'll see what he can do against his home state here today. A strong leg Marcus Williams and a bad kickoff. It'll come out on the 35 yard line. So the Bruins will start with favorable field position here against the Arizona State defense and Cade McNown who spent some time growing up here in California and then moved up to Oregon and now in his second year last year in a wild shootout he threw for almost 300 yards against the Sun Devils Chili's presents the backs and receivers and keep an eye on number 42 Skip Hicks he is the main man right there. Let's see if the coaches are conservative here in the opening up against this talented Arizona State defense, which shut out the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. And we'll watch, of course, number 59, Derek Rogers, matched against a young tackle, fake toss Hicks. Left hander coming out throwing, and he's complete on first down, an eight yard gain, and he put the ball in the hands of Jamal Clark, his senior tight end. Here is this offensive line. We referred to Chris Ferris. He is the freshman from Mission Viejo. He's a 300 pounder, but he has to hold up against Derek Rogers, who keys the defensive front for the Sun Devils here today. That will be the main matchup. Number 59, Derek Rogers. You can see the three linebackers there for the Sun Devils, and now we come up with a second and two. Look for a little screen pass right here. There it is. Right wide open. And a first down on the screen pass, coach. Well, Alan Borges, the offensive coordinator, said they cannot afford to be conservative against this fine defensive football team. They were going to come out and attack, and they've demonstrated that on the first two plays of the game. How about the defensive secondary here? Mitchell Fright Night Friedman, number 13. What about the Sun Devils secondary? Very good secondary. And Friedman and Richardson, the two safeties, are very good tacklers. They get them involved in taking that seven man front and making it a nine man front by bringing those safeties up in the in run defense like they did against Nebraska. They plan to do that today too. 18 yard gain inside the 40 yard line and they come back with Skip Hicks and he is swarmed at the 40 and third member of our broadcast group today Jack Aroot. let's go down to Jack. Well Brent you talk about the fact that the spark the, the, the Sparky and his crew the Arizona State University team are here in their first away game but they've got a new field to deal with this Rose Bowl while it looks pretty the footing is not very good you can see a lot of the turf that's been kicked up during the pregame warmups specifically the corners the safeties and the quarterbacks for ASU had trouble they're wearing the half inch spikes that's as deep as they can get with spikes. All right Jack we'll keep an eye on that story second and 11 for McNown and the Bruins and they come back with a deep handoff now to McNown and he makes his way to the 32 yard line. Big Chad Sauter the offensive left guard uh, good football player came off on a one on one block that time and, and got some movement therefore they had that crease to run up inside. Him. UCLA has been doing a fair job on third down conversion but they're against one of the best defenses in the Pac-10 with only allowing 21 percent success ratio on third down conversion. Third and four. Down the left hander moving over to the right and he has thrown for the first down here to the near sideline. And the receiver was Danny Farmer the freshman and the volleyball player a walk on receiver. He's the leading receiver here for the Bruins. They used motion that time because they want to against this man coverage to loosen up with motion and get the secondary backed off them. That's good game planning. You'll see a, a, a number of plays run with wide receiver motion on both sides of the long screen. Think so far the Bruin offensive line doing a job here. They have moved in their opening series smartly to the 26 yard line and now they'll try Hicks behind. There's an alley on the left hand side and Hicks makes his way inside the 20 yard line. Big explosion by the Florida Gators. Let's go to John Saunders. 
Brent, as you know, Florida trying to hold off what happened in Nebraska against the team you're watching today, Arizona State, that's being surprised as the number one team. Florida was not going to be surprised by LSU today. Danny Werfel to Ike Hillier, 35-6 at that point, 42-6 at halftime. They win it 56-13, and Danny Werfel, is he the Heisman Trophy winner? Right now, he's probably the leader. Four touchdowns after today. Yeah, John, we would have to agree that he probably has the lead right now. But Jake Plummer has not uh, received much notoriety east of the Mississippi. That could change in the next few weeks. Now, there was a face mask penalty against the Sun Devils. That's why the ball has been placed at the 11-yard line. Coming after him. And they get it done. That time they came in with Jeremy Statt from Bakersfield, California, who rolled in on Darrell Price, who stepped into that backfield to replace Hicks. UCLA defense, uh, excuse me, offensively have done a real good job. When you score 94 percent of the time, plus the 10 touchdowns is a very good ratio down. Doing a good job. They're just not getting down there often enough. Two yard loss, make it second and 12. Craig Willende is number 47. He sets down as the fullback. They move the strong side of the formation to the right, and they will run for some. And Darrell Price is stopped by Derek Rogers. So Rogers making his first stop of the game. You'll see number 59, Rogers. He normally plays on the weak side of the formation. You noticed on that play that UCLA shifted the tight end over to change the strength and put a tight end in front of him so they can block him a little better with combination blocks, sometimes double team blocks. That's a good way to slow him down. Red zone defense here. Pretty good job, 64%. Only five touchdowns. Pretty good job. Big third down for the Bruins. And McNown firing for the corner. So UCLA scores on its first possession of the game and that's what the underdog needs to do against unbeaten Arizona State get up on that board and dictate against Coach Snyder and the Sun Devils and Toledo's offense doing just that moving down the field and throwing the touchdown pass on third and ten that time. Well, they got him in the man coverage and the slot on the safety that way, and they take him to the corner with a delay pattern outside. He threw it perfectly, and that's only the third touchdown this year given up in the first quarter by an Arizona State defense. Real good execution, and you notice they didn't run very much there. They came to throw the ball with it. different actions from different formations. Burton hammers the extra point. And the kick is good. UCLA scores first as McNown throws to Todd McBride for six. In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's big mouth burgers, all just for playing. My husband and I both work, but when there's a problem with the kids around the home, I'm usually the one to deal with it. But it's not just me they depend on. It's my income, too. If anything ever happened to me, State Farm can help make sure their future is secure. If you want to talk life insurance with somebody who knows what they're talking about and knows how to listen, talk to a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. would be a good time to show you around the roomiest extended cab pickup there is. Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Pac-10 powers meet in a key conference showdown when Arizona State tackles the Trojans of USC for other regional action next Saturday on ABC's College Football.
The touchdown scored was to the right side of your screen, but the reason for the score is the excellent pass protection right here in front of you. See the time he got to set up. Now, if you give Cade that kind of time, he's going to hit the Todd McBride type receivers in a one on one situation each time, or at least 75% of the time. Good pass protection by that Bruin offensive line. You know, they came into the ball game, the ninth poorest scoring team in the first quarter in, in the Pac-10, and here they start out positively with that big drive. Greg Andrasek from Honolulu will kick it off. And back deep for Arizona State, Marlon Farlow and Terry Battle. So Arizona State down early as the Bruins move in on their opening drive against the Pac-10 leaders, co-leaders actually with California. This is Battle from the one-yard line. To the 10. Coming to the right side with speed. 25, 30, 35, 40. Look out. No flags. And Battle will take it all the way. 99 yards for Terry Battle, the junior from San Diego. Well, that's his all time long. He came in here with a 55 yarder as his all time long in his career, having returned 41 kickoff returns. Good blocking up front. And you know, and Bruce Snyder, head coach Arizona State, told me last night, Brandy, he said, you know, if we have an edge, I think we have an edge in the kicking game. And it was just demonstrated right there. Robert Neese, the junior from Bakersfield, who beat Washington with a dramatic field goal on what now appears to be one of the better games of the college football season. Number 16, Set now with the extra point that would tie us. And we're deadlocked at seven. Well, Arizona State was behind, folks, for all of 13 seconds. <laughs> you know, they came into this ball game having scored their first offensive possession four out of five times against Boise was the first time they hadn't done it last week. And here they don't need an offensive possession. Good speed, poor, poor leverage by the defense right here. People overrunning coverage, not coming to balance. The ball maybe not in the air quite as long as you'd like that ball to be in the air a little four seconds or a little bit better. It was not. It got there and it got in the right hands and here comes battle putting it down good kick out blocks people not doing it not enough blue jerseys around there they're coming from behind they did not do a good job of defensing the field first you know it's interesting when a team dick unbeaten comes back with something like that right away you get the feeling that they could just be in that kind of a season yeah, yeah you know they they are doing so many things real well their, their punting team is good their punt return team is good their defense is playing well when you shut out a number one team in the country like nebraska offensively they're as impressive a total package offensive team as i've seen this year now i say that because i like a lot of things they do so you know i'm positive about it but, uh, they're awfully good so this time, Williams hangs it. McElroy from a yard deep is going to bring it out. And he's swarmed at the 15-yard line, and down we go to Jackaroo. Jack? Brent, as Mitch Friedman, number 13, goes back out to play defense for Arizona State, he's going to have one wheel that isn't operating at full force. His right toe, his big toe, now you don't usually get turf toe on a natural grass stadium, but he stubbed it, they retaped it, and they've cleared him to play, but we've seen a lot of this, and it could be related back to that footing problem again when he was backtracking that last offensive series. Cast on the right hand, a broken finger, of course. One thing Jack has not broken is his mouth. He likes to announce the game as he's playing out there. Oh, yeah, fight night. He'll, he'll come up and, uh, you know, try to shake you up a little bit. Look how deep Hicks is here as McNown with that long handoff to the tailback and no more than a yard. You know, Dick, one thing that the Bruins have to be excited about is that on that opening drive, McNown was 4 of 4 for 45 yards, and he threw the touchdown pass. Sean swayed at that time with the tackle. Yeah, you know, and the other thing is that they didn't ask him to throw any real difficult throws. Screen pass, short pass out. The most difficult was the touchdown, the corner pattern into the end zone. That's a good way to start out a young quarterback that's not, you know, hasn't been totally consistent. There's Alan Borges, the offensive coordinator. the defensive look Sun Devils with four down linemen and now McNown is going to change up 
going to throw it near side and complete. They are working Farmer out over to that near side. Certainly you remember his father, so do I, and this youngster's a very good athlete. Yeah, George Farmer played here in 66, 67, 68, 69, then was a third round draft choice in Chicago Bears, and that's where you met him. He sure did. Fine football. He's a good track man, too, in high school, and, and this guy, like you said, Brent, is, is a good volleyball player. See, again, not a very difficult throw play action you're going to see a lot of play action you're going to see him also go strong run fake and try to pull the safeties up and then throw deep behind him on third down the Bruins elect to run for it and they're short and that Sun Devil defense coming up big that time Sueda number 99 the senior from Phoenix you know Rogers is not given credit for being a great run defender but that time he did an awful nice job at the, on that left side of the defense he strung it out for us and he got it, enough time to get some other people in the, in the maroon and white jerseys over there to make the play well here's Chris Saylor he's the UCLA punter sophomore from Burbank Dick. he's tapered off a little bit this year not as successful let me tell you something they got a man J.R. Redmond back here to return a punt don't bet against a kickoff return and then a punt return. This fella can flat out fly back oh, here. Nice punt, too. It is a good punt. Should be able to cut it out. Redmond's got it at the 31. Looking for the same kind of an out. He gets a block, breaks, but he is stopped at the 44 yard line, or he might have gone all the way. He is a talent, Brent. I agree with you in watching him. Whew. Speaking of talent, <laughs> speaking of Red Favre and the Green Bay Packers. Out here along the Pack Network, 6 p.m. Who does everyone like in that game? And then following it out here on the Pacific will be Dangerous Minds. That's the Monday Night Show, which of course is the mountain in the central and the east. Leads into Monday Night Football. And it's just great diverse positions out here along the path. You can see a lot of movement. This is Martin, the first play from scrimmage for Arizona State. As Jake Plummer, the senior out of Boise, Idaho directs this attack look at what he has accomplished over the last 10 games they've won nine he's thrown 21 touchdowns and only four interceptions Chile's backs and receivers from Arizona State Michael Martin we just watched him with the first carry of the game Lindsey Jackson coming along he's maturing as a receiver Keith Poole has been the go to man Devin Kendall steps in and Juan Roque at left tackle. But folks also keep an eye on the man next to him, number 56, Kyle Murphy. He could be the next outstanding lineman at Arizona State. So we've got a player injured here. This is the uh, defensive front. Darren Klein was shaken up. This is a weird defense right now. So 94 is out. We'll get Coach here to talk about it. It is, yes, a 3 3, and then there's a rover and a strong safety. Plummer with a short drop is going to throw against it as quickly as he can. And he hits Ricky Boyer with that pass coming out of the backfield. It'll be close to a first down. Andy Colbert, the senior from right here in Pasadena, made the stop. And Dick, there's Sean Williams. You like him, number 32, the free safety. Oh, I really do. Uh, you know, he he can come up and make plays. He has good range that when it makes it look like he's in double coverage, but actually he's in a free safety position sometimes. They move him all over the field, as you were saying earlier, telling the fans this is a totally different defensive scheme than we normally see. Here's the toss now to Martin, the fullback with a fine block over on that side. And uh, on that first down, Martin runs for about three yards. They're one of the few defensive teams now that we see that play three down linemen. And then from there on, you can't describe what else they do. They do so many different things. Safety's up in linebacker positions. In fact, Bruce Schneider told me they quit identifying positions by jersey numbers because they had to just say if he's in a linebacker position even though if he's a safety he's a linebacker and they're going to more uh, more zone blocking no man blocking and some gap blocking and they want to toss the ball and get it outside like they just did then second and seven plumber likes to throw on the roll comes to underneath incomplete penalty flag has been thrown by the linesman double coverage on the tight end is Zach Romero, who was running the route down to the near sideline. Chuck McFerrin, the Pac-10 referee today. Pass interference on the defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Sean Williams, one of the defenders in that sequence. Right. And Klein having his right 
leg tended to it. Well, they can't afford to lose defensive linemen. They're only playing with three, and they, you know they're a little bit banged up in that position anyway. Darren Clyde's dad was a fine football player, played for the, the Raiders and the 49ers. His brother was a tight end at Stanford, so it's a football family, and he knows how to play with a little pain. Hopefully, he'll be back. This defense is terrible. No yard it's tough to prepare, to prepare for because you just don't see it in First down, automatic first down after the pass interference. The ball is at the Bruins 42 yard line. In the round, they're going to bring Boyer off the wing. He's going to throw. Intercepted at the 10 yard line. Abdul McCullough with the game's turnover, the first one for the Bruins. He really should have run that football. And, you know, interception ratio, he has a tremendous ratio. He very seldom throws an interception. There he does right off the bat. Actually should have just took off and run the football. Dick, on the hit, we had a penalty flag thrown here, too. We'll take a look at this first. Here he lays it way up there deep, asking Ricky Boyer to throw the football. Now, as McCullough returns this was there a late hit on him you can see that a Sun Devil shaken up on the play so conference play physical a lot of wild and crazy things have already After happened in this interception, game illegal block in the back on the return the 10 yard penalty and first down so instead it'll go against the Bruins and they'll bring <laughs> it back but in case you just snapped on your TV said you've missed a couple of touchdowns and now it's good take good around there I've seen a lot of plays and missed very few, but I missed that handoff, Brent. I thought that was the quarterback coming out on a boot. <laughs> Better wipe my glasses off. So there's McCullough, and there you can see the Arizona State push off by the Bruins as they were returning. Tied at seven here with 7.38 to go in the first quarter. First and ten for the Bruins. They like to get in these bunch formations. You see like they're on the top of your screen and then, then move. They can throw so short passes out of that as well as run. So McNown rolling left by in time and a beautiful completion out to the 45. Is there a fumble? But the Bruins have got it. However, the receiver appeared to be down on contact. And that's what they're marking right there as tight end Clark makes his second reception good for 34 yards. Watch the two inside linebackers. They're frozen completely with that kind of action. Now that allows the throwing lane in behind those linebackers as big Jamal Clark tucks that ball away. Now he's a big guy at 255 pounds, so you better wrap him up when you get him down to get him down. First down, the ball at the Bruins 45-yard line. Now and off a play fake. And go deep, got an open man. Here it is, six more for the Bruins. And that time he hit number 85, Jimmy McElroy. A 55-yard scoring strike. Bruins lead for the second time. Hang on, folks. This one's going to be wild and woolly. That was one of those strong, strong run play fakes. They took the wide receiver and released him inside as if he's going to block the safety to tie in with the run play. Then he just broke straight up the field. The safety played run. They went in behind him. He got time to throw the football. Very good execution by Caden McNown. Merck makes it a seven-point advantage for the Bruins again. Cade McNown, the dandy little left-hander. Folks, he's seven of seven with two touchdowns in this game. Chevy Blazer. Sport utility vehicle with the driver control system. It's nice to know it's there. It's fall. That means two things football and projects. 
That's why we're having the True Value Kickoff Kick-In Sale. We're kicking it off by kicking in bonus items and extra savings. So you can get all those projects done and still have time to enjoy the season. Get True Test Easy Care Paint just $9.97, our lowest price of the year. We'll kick in a poster painted by an NFL quarterback free. True Value, official hardware store of the NFL and homes everywhere. Yesterday's antifreeze coolants don't offer today's multi-metallic engines enough corrosion protection from extreme hot and cold. They need Xerox with its one-of-a-kind patented formula, not just to protect radiators, but also water pumps and cylinder heads. So use Xerox. Otherwise, your engine could be extremely unprotected. Xerox. Extreme protection for today's engines. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. True value, no matter what you need, help is just around the corner. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best you each morning from Kellogg's. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. Well, that shows you the value of strong run play action against a game plan that's dictated on stopping skip picks, the, the, the running back, and committing the safety. You'll see right here the strong run fake pulled the linebacker and it also pulled and froze the safety to the right of your screen. That's Mitchell Freedom and he catches him right there at the bottom of your screen. He lets it go and there's the touchdown. The last time Terry Battle handled the kickoff, he went 99 yards. What's the chances of him kicking away from him this time and maybe seeing there's that onside? Sider recovered by the Bruins. Beautifully executed by their kickoff man, Greg Andrasek. I watched him do that on the practice field Thursday, and he was really good at it. Had his great control. You notice how that ball did not go very fast, so he could run as fast as that ball was moving, and it moved its 10 yards. Good, good, gutsy call, and a good kind time to do it. Now watch I am Badejo, number 50 for the Bruins. Watch him come over and recover the kickoff. <laughs> well executed. A good call by Bobby Toledo, the head coach. He has a lot of this stuff within his personality. He likes this kind of football. Cade McNown, perfect so far. Off to the kind of start the coaches dream of. And they pound with Hicks. And now the middle's are soft. And he makes his way for close to 10 yards. See the game plan unfolding. They shifted the tight end over again and got him on Derek Rogers. They ran inside him and kicked him out. He is mainly a great pass rusher, as Rogers is, and those are going to run at him and make him defense the run. Second and about a half yard here as number 59 Rogers gets down with that left hand, ready to go defensively. The fullback for the first down. Quick handoff to Willendy. He's a 227 pound sophomore. And now the Bruins, you can just feel them, Coach, gaining confidence in this situation with a 14-7 lead on Arizona State. They have done everything right physically and mentally. And that also starts to uh, the Arizona State people questioning a little bit. But, you know, uh, Bruce Snyder told me the one thing these kids have done, the Sun Devils have done, they've handled the different situations, the universities over a few years here real well. They, they'll handle pressure. Now the toss to Hicks behind Willendy with a good block and Hicks bangs to the 35-yard line. Bruin fans are certainly aware of the story concerning Hicks. Good talent if he can stay healthy. Yes, he is. You know, he's had a couple knee operations. And, and last week against Oregon, he had his all-time best game at 175 yards because they made the commitment to run him. Now, defensively, Phil Snow, the coordinator, has said, we're making the commitment to stop this man from beating us and going to try to make Cade McNown beat us. Well, right now, Cade McNown is doing a good job. Second down and four with Hicks, the lone running back, set behind Cade McNown. McNown for the day is 7 of 7 for 142 yards and two touchdowns. Here comes his eighth throw under pressure from Rogers. Wings it. And a beautiful play by the defensive back, 
number 12 on that side and that's Lamont Morgan coming off the bench to make the play excellent close on the ball because the route was I think fundamentally run pretty well he got down there he pushed him deep and they came back on the comeback there was no underneath coverage because they used play action to stop people from buzzing out there it was also a real nice block by the offensive lineman Andy Myers that got out there and allowed McNown to get outside good execution but better defensive play by Mr. Lamont Morgan third and four McNown can run when he puts pressure on the outside he's fully capable starts a motion man that's farmer coming in behind him so it gives him a slot look rolls deflected incomplete and a great play by Derek Rogers well he had good penetration they should never let him get in there that cleanly obviously the blocker didn't plan to let him get in there that cleanly but when he gets in there and he's not the tallest guy he's six foot two in the middle of your screen See, they jump outside, and that's that young redshirt freshman, Chris Barris, at six foot nine and a half, not moving his feet quite quick enough and getting down the middle of that guy to keep him on the line of scrimmage. He has great movement, maybe one of the fastest guys on the defensive team, including the second half. Sailor thoughts on the field to punt the ball at the Sun Devils 35-yard line, UCLA with the lead. He'll try to pooch it down, pull, let it nice run, and the Bruins Good job. down it at the two-yard line. That's the man who just scored McElroy doing the job. you and Brenda doing? Oh, man, she's got no respect for time in the morning. I warned you, didn't she's I? She's like controlling my life. <laughs> Get used to it, man. Yeah, well, while I'm getting used to it, uh -huh. I, I just miss breakfast. Learn to anticipate. What's this? Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Bars. Still low fat, still made with whole grain, still delicious strawberry taste. Oh, that's all right, man. Yeah, it's good. But now Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Bars have even more strawberry taste. I tell you, she's got me tied up in knots. I can see that. <laughs> oh, Brenda, baby, come on, man. You're spoiling her. Chevy S10 Sports Side. The coolest thing to come on the back of a truck since the Nutty Buddy. Chevy S10 Sports Side. Like a rock. With Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroot, I'm Brad Musburger. The Rose Bowl, Pasadena, California. UCLA upsetting Arizona State very early. 14-7. Terry Battle checks into that backfield for Arizona State. He'll get the call right here. And he's smashed at the five-yard line. Gain of a couple of yards on that first down carry. See Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator, committing eight and nine people to stop the run. You can do it even more so down here. Those three down linemen, they had about nine people standing right up close to the line of scrimmage right there. Of course, you're susceptible. You're forced to play man-to-man -man coverage on your corner, so he's putting a lot of pressure on those young people, and he knows he's doing it. Let's see now if Plummer and the Sun Devils throw out. They elect to stick with Battle for a couple more yards. And this will leave them with third and six. Jack Arut, uh, we've had some fellas shaking up here so far, partner. Yeah, but Brent, we can update him. Darren Klein, he had a sprained ankle. He's back in. Juan Roque, sprained ankle, retaped it. He's back in as well. So a lot of wheels going down early in this game. And the ball just short of the seven-yard line now. And Roque, the six-foot, seven-inch, or eight, depending on who's doing the measuring over there at the left side. Plummer rolls right in the end zone. Bruins in pursuit, and he is downed at the four-yard line. Arizona State must punt from its own end zone. See, he wanted to go deep, and there were two blue jerseys on the man he wanted to throw the ball too deep, so he had no choice. He had to go ahead and just scramble and just make sure he got out of the end zone and get back to the line of scrimmage. Jeff Rook, Ruckman, number 45, was chasing him down. Good coverage by the Bruins, good pressure by the Bruins. Lance Anderson. The 
is the Sun Devil punter. Averaging 45 yards a punt coming into this game. He has 10 over 50 yards. He's a good punter. They're coming after it. Boom. Fielded at the 39 yard line. And down to the 30 goes Paul Gidry, who is off the injured list. So he has returned to return punts. Let's take a look at how close they came. Yeah, back. right up inside. He gets right there, just almost one split second, and he gets there again. And they haven't had a punt block this year, but they got one close that time. See, and if you don't block it, and the punter sees that guy coming down the throat, it distracts him. And he hasn't had many bad punts this year. He's only had coming into this ball game eight punts less than 40 yards. And that was nice. Great field position. Attacking and movement in the middle of the uh, defensive line. You can see that 99 Sueda jumped across, and the only issue here is to whether or not he was pulled. It looked like they were going to blitz, and many times you get in a blitz mode, people jump Offside. on those. Ends. Defense, five yard penalty, still first down. So the Bruins with the ball at the 25 yard line and leading 14 7 here with 328 to go in the opening quarter. Everybody up, one man deep. First and five and it's going to be the running back and that's Darrell Price who has replaced Hicks at that tailback spot. Nice linebacking play that time by Scott Vonderahi number 50. He's a senior from Mission VAO. He's the leader and the, uh, the core of that defense. You know, Rodgers gets all the publicity because he sacks the quarterback. Look at this. First quarter score. Ten points. They were rated nine. Today they got 14. They got to be excited about that. Second down and five for the Bruins. He throw it to the halfback pass. He the receiver slipped. The receiver slipped on the play and they did not have a chance to complete it. Eric Scott was the intended receiver. Darrell Price throwing the ball and when Scott slipped there was no chance to get the ball. Well Scott went inside again like he was going to block the safety the run force man and then break in behind the corner try to get the corner to come up when he broke back to the outside he slipped and fell. They've got all the little tricks in their game plan. Alan Borges and staff doing a real good job of that UCLA offense, changing it up. Here's third and five for the Bruins. <laughs> McNown bobbled and a penalty flag. Pass interference is the call. Harlan Rashada off the Sun Devils bench with the coverage. That's that interference time. on the defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. And the spot of the foul was the 17 yard line. Through the right side of your screen, you'll see him get right up on him a little bit early, and I think he had the left hand on him before the right hand, and Harlan all over him, and the officials right there. That's the second pass interference penalty in the ball game. Sometimes when a fellow juggles the ball, it looks more like pass That's interference than it really is, is too. Now McNown short drop fires as he on target today. Ten more yards, and this time. He goes to the far side and McBride who caught his first touchdown pass of the game. He has hit McBride with one and McElroy with the other. You know I talked to Cade McNown in the practice field on Thursday and he, he told me he's feeling more comfortable with the offense all the time and he also told me there's a lot of things in our offense that we haven't used in a ball game yet and some of it we're going to use on Saturday. And the other thing he said that he was really he said you know if you can't get excited about a team that beat the number one team in the country you shouldn't play football. You know he's a real competitive guy sometimes to his own disadvantage because he'll run out of the pocket a little bit early. Rashada shaken up and uh, coming off to the side. Ready, 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 ready. 
Trainers Perry Edinger and, and staff bringing them off the field. That's one thing you notice about college football today. The, the quality of the training staff and the people. These kids are getting immediate attention and expert attention. Second down and one. On their line of scrimmage now, he's checking the direction he wants to run to. Hicks returns. First and goal. Bruins. They're taking advantage over there, running to the left side of the offensive line now. Vince Amy, the starting defensive tackle for Arizona State, did not come today. He's injured and couldn't play, and they're playing a backup player in there, and they're taking advantage. Of the offensive line, you'll see him coming off real well there. A nice kick-out block right there by Cheyenne Caldwell, 49. And when you get that kind of movement inside, you're going to make the first downs and move the chains. Hicks, right side, 6-4 for the Bruins. Woo. You talk about execution. Cade McNown has been flawless at quarterback, and he's getting help from his friends. And this time, it's Skip Hicks. The junior from Wichita Falls, Texas, who steps in for the Bruins' third score here in the opening 15 minutes. So, coming to this ball game, having scored 14 points, now you scored 10 points rather than the first quarter, and here you got 20. Good game plan. Makes it 21-7. Here comes Hicks right at you. Good wing block, good kick out like, but blocked by the offensive guard and a nice strut in the end zone by Mr. Hicks. Nice blocking here, right? You got a wing and a tight end right there, a little holding going on. Now here's the kick out block. Bang! Good job there by Andy Myers, number 78. Give that offensive lineman a little credit for help, helping that play get in the end zone. Nice job, Andy Myers. And credit the Bruin defense. Remember, after the punt buried the Sun Devils inside the five, the Bruins did not allow Arizona State to make a first down. Arizona State then punted out of the end zone, and it was only a 30-yard scoring drive because of that favorable field position. 21-7. The Bruins upsetting the unbeaten Arizona State Sun Devils. Well, you can sense being around these kids on Thursday practice field and around the coaching set that they had confidence that that Oregon game last week helped them with a good, strong win, and they'd forgotten about the Michigan loss and that kind of thing, and they were working and uh, with good concentration, and they just they felt good about coming into this football game, and now they're playing with that kind of confidence. Arizona State's only score, a 99-yard return of a kickoff by Terry Battle. Remember the onside kick after their second touchdown helped set up that whole sequence. They have a different style one too that they use. It's very good. I saw them execute it and they execute it real well. Andrusik tries it again. This one he takes deep. Good hang time too. Good hang time. From two coming. yards deep and he's coming out. Goes to the right side and he's down at the 26 yard line for Jake Plummer. And the Sun Devils will put it in play against this UCLA defense that has been jumping all over the place. Well, the second quarter has been Jake's Plumbers offensively uh, their best quarter so far this year, and we're getting close to that time. They have a lot of weapons, a lot of tools. He's got a lot of poise, and he can make a lot of big plays. To see the total yardage, of course, that does not reflect the 99-yard kickoff return. Jake Plummer high and incomplete, make it second and ten. Get so many people up on the line of scrimmage like they had that time. Even the, the guy that you can't block can jump and force you to throw the ball a little higher than you want to on those short three-step drops. The line of scrimmage was good, but people standing up behind the line of scrimmage forced that ball to be thrown higher. Second and ten, and they will run battle, and the Bruin defense ready for that challenge. 
third and long now. They've got to get vertical with their passing game, Brent. Uh, there's a lot of people on the line of scrimmage, meaning those corners do not have much help. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. You can go maximum protection. And Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator, told me that's his big concern, is maximum protection, give them time, and work deep against my corners. You're going to have to do that. Arizona State came in ranked number four in the country. And they are under fire here today. Down two touchdowns. The plumber, the senior from Boise, Idaho, changing the play up at the line. It's time. Dumps it over the middle. Puts it in the hands of Lindsey Jackson, who steps out of bounds on that far side. But he gained about 15 yards on that play, and only a sophomore, this young man out of the state of California, maturing into a fine receiver. Here he is right on the line of scrimmage. It's a crossing underneath pattern. They're hoping to, to scrape somebody off there in a man coverage right there. They should play him a little bit tighter. They're not on him tight enough. But you know, each time you watch an Arizona State film, you see this guy flash across the screen. He has big play ability. Now a first down, final minute opening quarter we've had four touchdowns already onside kicks 99 yard kickoff return for a score that's Boyer in motion and whistle Plummer is hit after the play was stopped and I think that was simply inadvertent on the man who came rolling through was a strong safety Larry Atkins well you see that time they brought both outside people Rocky Long the defensive coordinator Still first down. Said they plan to bring five and six guys most of the football game. Well, at the conclusion of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And today, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. 49 seconds left in the opening quarter here. Sun Devils with a first and 15. Ball on their own, 34 yard line. Sets the screen, and it is beautifully executed. They put it back in Jackson's hands, runs into his own man, or he might have caught the corner. As it is, it's good for 15 yards and a first down for the Sun Devils. See, they do a good job with that kind of play. And I'll tell you, Jake Plummer throws that ball so well. He takes a little off the ball. Here he goes at the top of your screen. He steps up. He'll come there. From the right side, you'll see the lineman coming out. They can block downfield if the ball's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Now, he has real good innate running abilities. A little shake and break right there. He gets caught from behind because he had to slow up for his own people. The ball is at the Bruins' 46-yard line. Now Plummer. And we battle see Terry the Battle, the ball carrier, slams inside the 45-yard line. Gain of a couple of yards on first down. Play comes in from Coach Snyder's sideline. Romero, the tight end, brings it in. Battle still down on the ground. And you know, one of the only negatives to a totally different kind of defense like this is that you yourself in spring practice and in fall training camp working against the different defense that you'll never see all year sort of hurts your offense a little bit early in the season. Into the first quarter, UCLA 21, Arizona State 7. On the information superhighway, you need more than the latest technology. very powerful drive. The Chevy Blazer with the Vortec V6. It's nice to know it's there. This is no ordinary toothbrush. This is a Braun Oral-B plaque remover. The new Braun Oral-B Ultra. Its ultra-speed oscillating brushing action removes plaque better than an ordinary toothbrush. That's not our opinion, that's clinical fact. And its unique cup-shaped brush head cleans even below the gum line. Dentists recommend changing your toothbrush every three months. We suggest you change it forever with the Braun Oral-B Ultra. Freshness Hotline, what's the problem? Man, my party is lame. I think I got some skunky beer. Sir, relax. When was your beer born? Born? 
What are you talking about? It doesn't have a born on date? A what? Do you have any Budweiser? No, man, you gotta help me. Okay, remain calm, sir. We're on our way. New born on dating from Budweiser because fresh beer tastes better. Go, 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 go. Sir, put down the skunky beer and slowly back away. Billy Medved has never missed a summer vacation at his cousin's. With roadside assistance from Liberty Mutual, he always makes it. Oh, Billy! Fortunately, with roadside assistance, he's guaranteed he can leave. If you have car trouble, we'll send help anywhere, fast. Safer, more secure lives. That's the freedom of liberty. Liberty Mutual. The first quarter belonged to the Bruins of UCLA. They did it offensively and also defensively. McCullough snatching this pass off on the halfback option. And the Bruins back in business again. The only Arizona State moment in the opening 15 minutes, a 99-yard return on a kickoff for their lone touchdown. We start the second 15 minutes, second and eight for Jake Plummer and the unbeaten Sun Devils. Plummer in trouble. Down near midfield and wrapped up by Travis Kurski, number 98, the senior from Yorba Linda. Taking a look at the first quarter numbers, you'll see total yards. Look at total domination right there. Unbelievable. First downs tripled right here. Plays doubled the number of plays. Turnover here, one, one for ASU on the halfback pass. Everything in favor of the Bruins. They don't surprise us, those graphics don't. That's been the story. Third down and 14. Fires complete. Put the ball back in Jackson's hands on the slant, just short of the first down. Third down, and it's about a one. I would go for it now, Brent. You need some kind of a thing. It's, it's inches to go. Those slant patterns are tough. And throwing to this kind of guy, he's tough. He'll go inside. They've got inside coverage on him, but he comes down flat enough, and see the ball is thrown perfectly. He should have really knew where that first down flag was. He gave up just an inch early. And he's still down, being tended maybe, to. Maybe that's why he gave up an inch early. <laughs> but he is a talent, that guy. His big game, he had eight versus Nebraska, which was a career high. No indication that Coach Snyder is going to do anything but go for it in this situation. Plenty of time. Uh, Coach, of course, was out seeing that Lindsay was all right. And now they're going to have fourth and inches. Watch Jackson's ankle here. Yeah. So his right ankle collapsing. J.R. Redmond, number 21, into the game. They're going to run through the gaps here. Movement and then the ball is snapped and let's see if they caught. I think Kirk Robertson Robertson the center tried to catch the defense offside by snapping it as they jump. Let's see what happened. And the ball put down so they decline it whatever the infraction was down on the play and it goes over to UCLA. Well, I think UCLA thought there was a flag, and there was not. I think they stop on this thinking that the yellow flag had been thrown. Watch. See, they're going to commit linebackers every one to move that. No, he snaps. Was... There is no flag. And the center, Kirk Robertson, was powered right back into Jake Plummer. So the Bruins will take over, and there was no penalty in that situation. And they run Hicks, and Hicks busts out. To the 45 yard line with the Bruins on the roll again. Outstanding kick out block by the fullback. You can run inside when your fullback will block like this. He really did a nice job. With good coaching, good fundamentals. Here it is right here. He'll kick out right there and they run up underneath and outside the tackle spot. Pow! Nice kick out and he sunk his butt in his block, raised his shoulders in there. Excellent execution of a fundamental technique. Here's the kick out again. Excellent technique by Craig Wallendi. Love to see kids do this. Now 
Now McNown in pursuit steps away out of bounds at the 45 and he made his way back to the original line of scrimmage. So Cade McNown is certainly the standout so far in the game that he is authoring against this Arizona State defense. Watch this scramble. He has that quickness ability right there, and he gets out of outside the man battle. It can run, you know, and his problem so far this year is he's taken the scramble play and turned it into a bad play, throwing the interception. That time he tucks the ball under the arm and gets it out of bounds. No sense in taking a chance when you've got a nice lead. Second down and nine for the Bruins. UCLA leading Arizona State 21 to 7 here in the first half. Going deep and incomplete. So let's check in now on Alabama and North Carolina State. We send you across to the other coast, the right coast, John Simon. Thank you very much, Brent. Well, you've got a lot of scoring in your game. You expect a low-scoring game in the Alabama contest. That's Dennis Riddle from three yards out. Gets the Crimson Tide on the board. It's 7-3 now in the second quarter. Brent. John quietly unbeaten. Crimson Tide. You talked to Coach Gene Stallings, was he? I talked to him. He says they're a little bit weak in the offensive line, but they're playing hard. He's pleased with his coaching staff, and he thinks they can keep winning football. Third and nine now for the Bruins. Price in at money back from the shotgun. But now he gets plenty of time. Pulls one complete to that far side. And how about this young man? He hits Derek Ayers. Washington coming back there a little bit. I'll tell you, good game planning now. They're taking the tight end and the shotgun and moving them over on Derek Rogers. Wherever he lines up, they move him over. And that time, the tight end cut Derek Rogers, knocked him down, and gave him a good throwing lane. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now they're going deep pattern here. Derek Ayers, number 25, a little comeback. Ah, oh, that's a good way to come back to the football, Derek. Coached his dad, who's my fullback on the Rose Bowl team. Jason Simmons was the coverage man on that corner over there. First down ball at the 32-yard line. And this is Price. Price behind the left side. They counter back to the 25-yard line. And there, Dick, this is a very impressive UCLA. This is not the same football team we watched on tape against Michigan. Who oh, lit a fire or against the Oregon? Bruins. No question. Or against Oregon. You know, really, it's, it's a team. It's a young football team. There's only two seniors on the offense. They're well coached. There's their coordinator right there. Alan Borges, but the rest of the staff, Gary Bernardi and Ron Carragher and Steve Marshall and Skip Pete, they're all doing a good job. To see a team improve as much as they've improved in five ball games is a salute to good coaching. Second and four. And this time, it was the Arizona State defense not allowing Price anything. And uh, Jack, uh, you called it at the start of the game, partner, when you said this turf was slippery. We've got some ankle injuries. Yeah, add Lindsey Jackson to that list along with Terry Battle. Battle came out and just said it was a little sore and wanted some more tape. But in the case of Jackson, they stripped off the original ankle tape and they put new tape on. Both players are cleared to play. Now, we talked to UCLA before the game and they said, you know, we use it as an advantage. We know what the field is like. We know it's a little loose and slippery. We try to make the play soft, especially in the corners. Big moment right now. Third and four for the Bruins. Arizona State needs a stop. McNown's going to get him a first down. Oh, McNown is hit hard, okay. but he made it to the 15-yard line for a first down as Fright Night Friedman and Simmons. He wanted, to throw, he wanted to throw the ball back to the backside to the running back coming out of the backfield. They were in tight man-to-man -man coverage, and he couldn't throw it, so he turned it into a quarterback draw. Now, defensively, they're prepared to go ahead and let this young quarterback run the football, then try to punish him when he gets hit like punished here. Ooh, wow! And that was fright night, and that was kind of frightening. Wasn't it? First down now. Ball is at the 15-yard line. the whistle prior to the snap and the play is stopped well Phil Snow the defensive coordinator from Arizona State said we're going to not acknowledge the fact that he can run if he scrambles and we're not going to spy or hold people if he scrambles when he has the ball downfield we're going to make him pay the price by hitting costly penalty they moved into the red zone and now it comes back to first and 15 for coach Toledo and the Bruins the game plan unfolding here of moving the tight end, setting him up one side, getting Rodgers lined up where he's supposed to line up, then flopping the tight end over to Rodgers and blocking the big person on the smaller defensive line. So far, is paying off, both in run and pass blocking. 
Arizona State looking for a big play here on defense. They try to buy 14 points right now. They like to throw from this kind of a bunch formation. Got a hurry. Man. They did just get the snap. No, they did not. Penalty flags, and there's the sack. They count as sack. Now let's see how the officials rule on this. On the offense, penalties decline. So there were all Second kinds down. of mistakes on that. Larry Johnson, the linebacker, with the sack as the Bruins here with their poorest performance in a series yet. See, they got five men in the backfield. Freeze it right there, and I'll say one, two, three, four, five. You can't do that, people. You can't put five in the backfield. So with the sack. It'll come back to the 34 yard line There's and three. it will be second down and 23. Second down and 28. It was Phil Snow calling the defenses. I wonder what uh, pointing it to your ear means. And that time oh. it is called. That is twice in a row. McNown has brought the play clock down to zero on the snap. And that time it was caught. I thought they missed it on that prior Thank snap. You. Offense. Five four yards, second down. Second down, one thirty-three. Bobby Toledo has to be very pleased with how things are going right now. Making himself a note. Eliminate penalties. Talk about that at halftime. Well, Don't the quarterback Dick has got the 25 second clock right in front of him. As he's looking up at that portal, he comes that screen they used in the first quarter, and he drops it. And it is dropped by Darrell Price. He's a true freshman. We'll let him make a mistake once in a while, but no reason to drop a play like that. This will be third and 33 <laughs> for the Bruins, and Arizona State has to be taking heart over this. Bowl in Pasadena UCLA with a 21 7 lead over Arizona State now facing a third and 33 against the Sun Devil defense Cade McNown waits fires toward the end zone has a man and it's caught touchdown Bruins third and 33 Derek Ayers makes the catch we've got an upset in the making in Pasadena <laughs> my gosh you said it, Brent. Third and 33. Bruce Snyder he says, I cannot believe. I could see him completing a 15-yard pass and running it for the first down, but I cannot see him completing a pass for the touchdown. They bought a lot of time out of that shotgun in movement of the quarterback. That gave the receivers time to work downfield. Bjorn Merton. The senior from Centerville with his fourth extra point attempt. It is 28 7. Arizona State's only touchdown, a 99 yard kickoff return. Otherwise, it's been all Bruins. I heard someone say, What will they think of next? And I thought, How wonderful it is to imagine that someone is out there thinking of things. And that's their job, to think of something that no one has ever thought of. And all we have to do is wait and wonder, what will they think of next? The Chrysler Cirrus, Concord, and LHS, bringing what's next from the cab forward engineering of Chrysler. Dear Mom, camp is rough. Being out in the wild sure makes a kid hungry. But the sandwiches we got just aren't enough. It makes me homesick for you and a hot bowl of Campbell's tomato soup. Nothing turns an ordinary sandwich into a hot, satisfying meal like rich, wholesome Campbell's tomato soup. Mom? I brought you something for those sandwiches. Wow, tomato soup. You're the best, Mom. Campbell's makes everything. Mm -hmm.
Fantasy Sunday be part of one of America's finest and funniest traditions. It's funny how Americans come together for new America's Funniest Videos, ABC Sunday. Cade McNown, 10 of 14, 202 yards and three touchdowns. And ladies and gentlemen, he came into this game with only two touchdown passes and five interceptions. He's the man of the hour so far in Pasadena. And the Bruins lead the Sun Devils in a shocker, 28 to 7. Well, you know, it's amazing what a preceding game can do for you. Last week, they played well against Oregon in an approach to run the football, pound it, get tough, play good defense. And with the game plan today to come in and keep it wide open, more the kind of football that Bobby Toledo likes to coach and, and play on game day. And, and, you know, they've gained a lot of confidence, and now they're executing like they have confidence. Now they better cover kickoffs, huh? Redmond, who checks in to return this kickoff from the goal line. Dean, he's got speed. Now he demonstrates it to the 30, trying to get outside the kicker. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds on that far side at the 42-yard line. Good kickoff return by the freshman, J.R. Redmond. UCLA Bruin kickoff coverage. You're not defensing the ball well. They're staying spread out. That ball was all the way over into the left corner there. They've got to constrict that over there and then keep it over in that area of the field. That should never bounce out there like that. 927. Very important now. And that's the beauty of having a senior team like Arizona State. Very important to play this one at a time. Remember, a year ago, UCLA opened up a big lead on the Sun Devils and then couldn't hold on. So now Jake and the unbeaten Sun Devils will attempt just to get a little rally going here before the half. Maybe get another seven up there on the board and trail by two scores instead of three. We'll watch now the senior leadership. You cannot try to come back all at once. It's 28-7. The Bruins feeling real good along about now. Plummer going to throw on first down. Had time. So over the middle, and it's dropped. Juggled by his wide man, and that was number 81, Kenny Mitchell. And remember, Lindsey Jackson has that injured ankle right now. You know, they haven't had to come from behind this year. You know, that they had the tie situation at the end of the Washington game. You know, when you're going to come from behind, you have to have people like Todd McGee right there make those kind of catches. That's within his skill, within his talent. He's got to make those kind of plays. Now Jackson's watching and Kenny Mitchell as the wide man as now they come back and they hit Poole. And I believe that's the first time today. Now there's the calmness of the senior leadership. And finally, Poole makes his first catch, and he's out of bounds here on the near side at the 43-yard line. This guy's an outstanding player. He comes into the football game with 14 receptions this year and six of them touchdowns. They've got to get the ball in this guy's hands if they want to score points. Well, if you like exciting, wide-open football, the college brand, <laughs> folks, you come to the right place. First down now, and Jake is back, getting time, going to go down the left side. Poole incomplete. Good coverage. That was coverage by Andy Colbert, who grew up right here and played in Pasadena. Muir High School. Six brothers, one sister. Eight children in the family. You can usually play pretty good defense. You got eight kids in the family. I'll tell you that. But you know. Brent, Jake Plummer hasn't had to win the football game. They've come in here with a 60% run, 40% pass. Now they're in a situation where they're turning the game over to him and say, hey, we've got to get some points on the board, and they're cutting back on the run game. Make it second and 10 for the Devils. And the snake will take off, and he'll make a first down. Inside the 30 to the 26 yard line. I mean, a big alley opened up and Jake just took off. You know what? They caught him in a man under coverage with two deep safeties, and the receivers took off and uh, ran the defenders deep, and they couldn't. You'll see what I'm talking about. See, they're tight man here and tight man here with two deep safeties, and they take off and run with the receivers, and they don't see the quarterback running right up the back as he scrambles out of there. See, there's no one covering the quarterback. On first and ten, they throw the toss sweep, and the Bruins met it at the pass that time. Nothing doing for JR. Well, they have eight people up, and the eighth guy that time was up outside the tight end. Boy, it's tough to sweep with a toss play if that guy's standing out there free like that. He had good penetration and knocked it back to the inside. Marlon Farlow, number four, ready to bring the play in from Coach Snyder's. 
sideline after this second down and 12. This an obvious passing situation. And Plummer will do just that. Left side got a man. Pool. Pool is out at the nine yard line. It's first and goal. Arizona State. Nicely executed. And they're getting the ball to the guy that normally helps them win football games. That's Pool. Comes in here with 20 touchdown career passes. He runs a corner move. Now he's going to come off the corner. He's going to make a move to the post. Comes in. He uses his head. Then turns back to the outside and turns Andy Colbert around. Plus the ball was thrown right where you have to throw it. Nice job by both people. Put the ball down close to the eight, and you can see just how successful they have been. 14 of those 17 touchdowns and three field goals. Now with a first end goal, they're coming out. Plummer's going to throw against it. Can't get it off. He is sacked at the 16 yard line. Needs to get rid of the ball in that situation, Boy, Dick, had to. even if he gets it out of the back of the yeah. end zone. Don't take the sack. Yeah, you could see him coming to the right side of your screen. You'll see Klein, 94, ends up being the main rusher. But see, he's forced back up inside. There's a miss right there. Another guy right there, 57, Dan Juan McGee, puts him down on the turf. Ian, Throw it in the back of the end zone. Ian Weldon Ford did the job that time, didn't they, coach? Now yes, here's the Bruin. Defense in the red zone. Yeah, well, 14 9 touchdowns. That's, you would say defense has too many touchdowns to give up. Force him to catch the field. Now, second of 15, if they want pool this time, he's slot right. Pump fake, got him turned back the other way. Touchdown, and it's pool who Very came well, out well. of the slot. They pump fake, he was running the slant. He cut back to the flag. It was beautiful. Really well done. That's tough, that kind of coverage. See again, get the guy, get the ball in the guy's hands that make a difference in winning and losing. And Keith Poole has been doing that his entire career. Here he is, a senior from Clovis, California, 20 career touchdowns. He's five behind the career leader in, in Doug Allen's. And yeah, uh, you know, they're doing it right, Brent. Putting the ball in his hands. Robert Nice, the junior from Bakersfield. He's the young man who beat the Huskies. Hit one against Corn Huskers. This one's good. And the lead is down to two scores. 28 14. And now from Paris. From Milan. From St. Louis. Introducing a new look from Budweiser. Born on dating. It's the day your bud was born because fresh beer tastes better. Nice label. Thanks. Sirius LXI. The Chrysler Sirius. The difference between just making something and inventing something. Here's Poole inside the slot on the strong safety, McCullough, right there. And he takes him in on a little quick move to the inside, turns him around. That's a wide receiver on a strong safety. You should be able to beat him on a 1-1 situation, and he gets it done. Coach Poole, his first receptions of the afternoon, he caught three for 50 yards and the touchdown on that drive. Just what you said. Put the football in the hands of the experienced man who's done it before. Marcus Williams. You know, I learned a lot of things from different people. And I know Chuck Knock used to say, he got a good football player. Put How is Chuck? You talk to him on yeah, the phone? Yeah, I talked to him. He's doing well. He's That's doing great. well traveling around the country. Well, Arizona State now. Take it back deep, but this is being down by McElroy in the end zone. Let's take you through our ABC Sports lineup of college football games. Next week, Sun Devils again. Tempe will be rocking. 
They'll take on the Trojans of USC. USC playing Arizona across town today. Ohio State, Purdue. See how the Buckeyes make out there. Nebraska, Texas Tech. Cornhuskers go to Lubbock. Georgia Tech Clemson. Now that's 12:30 Pacific time for you folks back east. Of course, it is the normal 3:30 start along the network. So with Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger. It's 28-14 UCLA leading by 14 points here with 7:28 to go in the first half. And Cade McDowell, who's played a sensational game so far, fires complete to the 29-yard line. Nine yards on first down. He hits airs. Look at the first half possessions. Nine plays, touchdown. Two plays, touchdown. Five plays, touchdown. You love these because that eats up the clock when you're ahead. Real good offensive game planning and execution by the kids on the field. Second down and one. Skip Hicks back in and they'll come with Wallandy, the short man or the fullback. They pound right straight ahead for the first down. Dick, one of the things I want to ask you about, a coach just taking over like Toledo in this situation, we know he's pretty freewheeling and wide open, but here you are, you lead the unbeaten Sun Devils. Isn't there a tendency to grow just a little too conservative as this game progresses? I don't think that's his personality. I really don't. And you've been around him. I've known him for a long time. He's a product of Vic Rowan from the San Francisco State era. And uh, he, it's not his nature. He likes to keep the game wide open. He had the dandy little left-hander at the controls today. First and ten from McNown and the Bruins. And this is Hicks. Big hole. Great. Hicks explodes. Midfield. 45. Look out if he can shake the last man. But he could down at the 30-yard line. That is Skip Hicks from Wichita Falls, Texas. Boy, again, I can't say enough about a fullback that can block well. Tackle got a good turnout block. The guard did a nice job. And the fullback did a real nice job of coming up inside the hole. You'll see from the right side of your screen, the fullback will flash in there. Here he comes. He'll dip. There's a nice block. That gave him the hole. Now just good, intense running by Hicks. He just pulls those legs out of there. And they've been operated on a couple times. Jason Simmons saved the touchdown by hanging on, but it's a 39-yard burst for Hicks and the Bruins back in business again. Remember, they threatened a short time ago, and then penalties and all sorts of things went wrong. They didn't handle the clock. There's the young man who saved six. He's a junior from Hawthorne, California. When you look down the roster of Arizona State, you say, well, are we playing a team from California playing UCLA? Yeah, they're, not, they're not playing on the road. They're playing at home. I hard find an Arizona youngsters down here. 11 for 93. Those are the numbers that Hicks says accumulated here in the first half. Bob Toledo making his own stand. First and ten now for the Bruins. The ball at the 30-yard line. He counters back with Price that time, and he is a stop for a yard loss. And uh, Jack Aroot doesn't seem the same coming here, not seeing Terry Donahue over there on that sideline. Well, as soon as Terry Donahue left and Bob Toledo was hired as the head coach, Toledo set about to create some new traditions, Brent. Most notably, he decided that what he wanted to do is make UCLA more of a college-type stadium, even though they play in the Rose Bowl. So we had all the championships listed up along the press box. He also brings the players out for a walkthrough. He said it's very important on Friday for my players to visualize what it'll be like on game day. Just several new traditions for Bob Toledo. McDowell on second down, incomplete, and he had the slant man that time, and they couldn't hook up Danny Farmer, the freshman, with the sophomore quarterback McNown. One of the things that you certainly get the feeling about is that this team has some magnificent days ahead of it. When oh, you yeah. take a look at how young this club they is. They are right young. Now. And when your quarterback is back and your running backs are back and your skilled people are back, you, know, you have a chance. Your offensive linemen, they take longer to develop than anybody. They're all back. And they're all smart kids, too. Toledo said, forget about that tomorrow stuff. We want one right now. Third and ten, and it's out of the shotgun. Movement over there, the right tackle, I believe, pulled back prior to the snap. That would be Chad Overhauser if he's on that side. And uh, did Sueda come across into the neutral zone? He pulled his right arm out to start his pass set and then fell down backwards. <laughs> hey, this is going to be a pretty good football game, folks. Remember, uh, remember last year? Georgia played well before spitting the bit against Tennessee, as I recall. 
Is Ray Goff passed up a punter? I, I can't remember the sequence. I don't want to dwell into it. But I do know that Tennessee's a couple touchdown favorite in that game tonight. It's on ESPN. And I think the Bulldogs might just show up for that one. Third and 15 right now for the Bruins. We've got single coverage on a wide receiver on the slot line. Hit on the release. Cat on the blitz. Out of bounds at the 10 yard line is Eric Scott. What a throw by Cade McNown. He was being buried on the toss. Demonstrating strong arm. A left hander throwing across his body to the right. A wide, deep out pattern. He gets nailed. He maintains poise. He's sprinting away, stops, throws back, and still. I don't even know if he saw the receiver when he threw that. Here it is again. Watch the top of your screen. Now move in move, then back to the corner. There it is. Nice catch by Eric Scott. Dick, they turn Jason Simmons, the cornerback, around on this play. That Once he injury. turns his back, he was lost. So it's first down now for the Bruins, and a strong defensive play against Darrell Price that time is being made by Pat Tillman. That Pat Tillman is a real overachieving linebacker. I don't mean he's a derogatory, but he's only five foot 11, 204 pounds out of San Jose, California, and he makes plays. When you watch this defensive team play, he makes a lot of plays. Plus, he's a 4.0 student. Never met a Barbary like. <laughs> Second down and 12. Now on the two-yard loss. Down inside of five minutes here in the first half. Important minutes now for the Sun Devils. This time he is sacked. And coming on in, Derek Rogers, the big man in that Arizona State defense. See, their offensive tackle, Chris Ferris, the young redshirt freshman playing his fifth college football game at six, nine and a half, 300 pounds, cannot block him one and once. He set thinking he was going to go outside, and he came underneath. And big Chris, number 71, uh, I think is the biggest offensive lineman in the Pac 10. He's a, 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 the tallest one, anyway. But see, you set thinking he's going outside. You set a little too deep. He comes underneath you. Well, it is a third down and a goal from the 22-yard line. The Bruins again in retreat. McNown gets time this time, and it is complete to the 13-yard line. This ball will be marked on the successful completion as he comes back to his tight end. Mike Grieve, and there's a young man who has a future here. Yes, he does, and he's been banged up. He's just back healthy. He didn't play last week. He's not 100% yet, but he will be the starter within a, another week, probably of practice and rehab work, but healthy enough to catch a little stop pattern. And he also moved the change, moved the ball closer to a higher percentage field goal. To Bjorn Merton, setting out to attempt the 31-yard field goal. The ball will be put down at the 21-yard line. His ratio of kicking inside short is as good as anybody, uh, really. He's better than the NCAA average and equivalent to the NFL kicker, really. He's very active inside. It's a block. Arizona State. Big play. I think it was Brent Bernstein, 94, that got in there inside penetration. And he's a big, tall guy. Yes, that's who it is. He's six foot eight, 280 pounds, and he used the entire frame. And a big lineman should never be able to crack that inside gap. When that happens, there's a breakdown in offensive line technique of closing that inside gap. I heard someone say, what will they think of next? And I thought, how wonderful it is to imagine that someone is out there thinking of things. And that's their job, to think of something that no one has ever thought of. And all we have to do is wait and wonder, what will they think of next? The Chrysler Cirrus, Concorde, and LHS, bringing what's next from the cab forward engineering of Chrysler. ASU is a lot like our own state of Arizona. Most of our history is still in front of us. ASU has a 100-year tradition as a teaching institution, and in just over 35 years has become a great university. We have become one of the nation's elite, a Research One institution that stands at a pivotal point in our history. A great university works for everyone.
College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chrysler, and the cab forward sedans of Chrysler. What's new in your world? And Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. 302 left here in the first half. Sun Devils trailing by 14 have the ball back and they have survived another scoring threat by UCLA. Each of the last two times UCLA has moved down within striking distance and they have come up with zip. Now Jake Plummer and the Sun Devils go back to work. Throws incomplete the receiver that time Lindsey Jackson back in the game he had not turned around and he did not see the ball headed in underneath him. Here's we're talking about the, the field goal rush they drive the offensive tackle straight back and bring Bernstein inside him now that should not happen an offensive lineman should close that gap to the inside and be knocked back to the inside not straight back like that. Javelin Gidry the cornerback on the left side you can see that he is in bump and run coverage down here on the short side Plummer. Looks back to the left and almost served up an interception. That was almost on a platter for Sean Williams, the free safety from Encino. Holy mackerel. It was right there, and he's capable of catching the ball, but, you know, this uh, secondary has picked off five this year. So we're at the top of the hour, and here in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, we have 254 left in the first half of UCLA. Upsetting Arizona State 28 to 14. This a third and 10 for Plummer and the Sun Devils. And Boyer goes in motion behind the formation. Blitz is picked up incomplete. The pass is dropped by Boyer. Should have had it. Definitely should have had it. That time they picked the nose guard up from his three point stance, Jeff Ruckman. He was standing around there and rushed four people rather than five. And we're just playing a little zone coverage in there like that. If he catches that ball in that zone, he has a nice running lane up at least for a first down or more. Lance Anderson set to punt. Paul Gidry coming after the Bruins. Nice punt. That's hard to return. Fair catch is the signal, and Gidry makes the catch at the 46 yard line. And so we're moving in on halftime, and let's check with John Saunders to see what's ahead for us. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, we'll have all the day's scores and highlights, plus a look at the bump and run. Yeah, the aggressive new trend in college football. A lot of the top defenses are using it. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. So that's still two minutes and 42 seconds away from us. And now UCLA with good field position will attempt to threaten again. They're coming with a safety blitz. Got isolated coverage and they are working against Simmons on that far side. But that time Jason Simmons the cornerback from Hawthorne was all over the wide receiver. See, that tells you right there that Bobby Toledo hasn't pulled in the strings with a 14-point lead. They saw the safety blitz coming. They audible and went after the single coverage and tried to get it. So he's not going to turn conservative on, on the Bruin fans. He's going to keep attacking. Second down and 10. Split out to the right hand side where he's matched against Simmons again, and here comes the safety blitz again. Picked up, and they throw in the play. So now the yeah. penalty flag has been yeah. thrown. Yeah, he knocked him down, Brent. He had to. He didn't do it on purpose, but uh, that doesn't matter if it's on purpose. Damian Richardson was coming inside out and knocked him down prior to him getting the ball, and he may not have been able to catch it anyway. Let's see if they call it uncatchable. Damian Richards. Yeah, the one official shaking his head yeah. like they can't catch it. Damian Richards has committed the foul, or they think they've committed the foul. His nickname is the Professor because he's a straight A student in bioengineering. It's a big call. Holding on the defense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Yeah. First yeah, down Bruce is not happy. Because of ten yard penalty. So defensive holding and the ten yards. And the ball will be moved inside the Sun Devils 40 yard line with 235 left on that clock and the Bruins leading Arizona State by 14 points. The Sun Devils have played good defense here in the second quarter down on this end of the field. They've, they've done a good job. You know they have 
fewer yards to defend in depth. They can be aggressive. They like to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They like to play a lot of quarter coverage. And, that, and so it's just less distance to cover to the end zone, and they've been playing it well. They show man on the corners. They're slipping the safeties up again. Come again. Here they come. McNown hit on the release. That's one on one. Incomplete. You know, it's amazing that he can still see the guy and maintain concentration because he had to see that pressure. Yes, he's left handed and he's got his back to that kind of pressure coming from. Him. But, you know, he threw that deep corner pattern a little while ago complete when I don't know if he saw the guy. And this time he almost throws the deep pattern one on one. They would be really smart, I think, Brent, against that blitz to come up and try to come underneath him. It's a little bit easier throw and get the outside and then come underneath on a post move. I think they've been bringing Fright Night. Yeah, and he is a Fright Night. He Mitchell, brings a load. Mitchell Friedman blitzing on each of the last two plays, second and ten. They leave Simmons one on one against Matt. Here it comes again. They show it again. Here he comes, and they hit him on the release. Incomplete, and it is third and ten. Same play, same look. Corners playing, bump and run, and both safeties are coming. You know, Phil Snow, defensive coordinator, using a smart move because you don't normally see safety blitzes like this all the time. See him the right side of your screen, he's coming, the left side of your screen coming. Those are defensive backs and linebacker combinations. So good change up because you don't expect to see a defensive coordinator call the same blitz two in a row, let alone three in a row. Well, Derek Smith was the linebacker who had joined in on that blitz. Now third and ten, and the Bruins will drop back in a shotgun, but now Friedman drops off, not blitzing this time. Backs into the zone. McDowell got that incomplete. He had turned the defensive back around. McElroy did that time, but the pass could not be caught. And now it is fourth down again with 220 to go. Credit the aggressive nature of the defensive series for Arizona State that time. You know, this was a real athletic move. He turned all the way around and came back and almost made the play. Jim McElroy, a junior out of Los Angeles, California, Washington High School. Good job, good athlete. Chris Saylor standing back in a punt formation, and Poole goes back deep. He has very good hands. Saylor will try to pooch it. Now. Not get it. It's into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. Boy, Jake Plummer, close. Arizona State, will have two minutes to work with there, Coach. And he's oh, been we, successful in two-minute drills. Well, we have a quick moment here. Let's remind everybody what's ahead tonight on the uh, network. Second Noah, followed by a new episode of The Coach, Common Law, and then Relativity. So they'll start at eight Eastern. 7 Central, and I guess it's also 8 out here on the Pacific Network, too. 2.14 to go, 28-14. UCLA came into this game a 5-point underdog, and they lead it by 14 points right now. Timeouts left, one apiece. So Jake and Arizona State will have one timeout. Or I should say, hold on, let me, let me recheck that. George Hill, my crack stats man, says you're not looking at the clock. Well, it's three apiece. Thank you very much. So three timeouts for Jake and the Sun Devils right now as they bring it on up here against the Bruin defense. On first down, he's hit on the release, and it is complete. And that time, Boyer hung on after dropping one in the last offensive series. The sophomore from Compton, California, holds on this time. This is the kind of football that Plummer really likes. He's five for five in this series of uh, two-minute drills this year. Four field goals and touchdown. It turns the game over and puts it in his hands, and, and he likes this kind of football, and he does it well. Dick, how about the two cornerbacks? I think we're going to have a timeout called here. Timeout, Arizona State. So Arizona State uses its first timeout, and uh, Plummer will come over. Let me ask you again about the defensive backs of the of the Bruins and holding up in this situation against Plummer. Brent, they've done a real good job. And I, I, if I were calling the defenses right now, I wouldn't leave them one and one I would go up and play my tight man coverage up in front and back them up with two, three safeties. Don't give them a chance to take you one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, Gidry, number three, has played well, as Colbert has made some nice plays at that corner position. When they've beaten the Bruin defense, they've beaten the safeties inside in a man-to-man -man situation. Well, Jack Aroop, Jason Plummer is about ready to go back to work. Yeah, Brent, you know, you've got to consider this fact. Jace, this is Plummer's fourth different quarterback coach since he came. And a writer asked recently, asked Plummer, well, what did you think about that? And there's his answer. So he does have a sense of humor, but consider this fact. Every quarterback coach that has coached Jason Plummer, where have they gone? They've gone on to be offensive coordinators at another school. 
Well, see, they want, other schools want Bruce Snyder's offensive philosophy and package, so they hire them away to bring that package to that school for that head coach. Very creative package. As you pointed out, Dick, when we were watching uh, tapes, he makes use of all his weapons, uses the entire field, likes to throw the screens underneath. By the time the game is over, the defense will have had to look at everything. Yeah. Now he's down 14. He'll come up with a few new wrinkles, too. Oh, he will. Second down and four for Plummer. Back in motion. They're using that to influence the defense. The offensive line holds up. Fires wide open that time. Now, Dick, talk to me about this unusual Bruin defense. That time they sent Boyer. They're using a motion man, and that time he was wide open as he slipped out of the left side of the formation. Well, many times you use motion and have him run behind an offensive, another receiver, and you can pick somebody off if they're in man. You'll see a man going in motion right here. See, now, if they chase them all the way across, it's man-to-man. -man. They snap it in closely, and they pick off each other when they get into a crowd, and the defender can't get through those bodies. We've got 142 left now, Coach. Still a long, long ways for the Sun Devils. They bring Boyer the other way, and Plummer rolls in that direction. He'll throw underneath, complete again, this ball out to the 39. But they are not chewing off big chunks of yardage with these plays. They can't spring anybody deep, and they're not really trying to with these patterns. Plus, they're not giving them a lot of time. They're bringing some kind of a, a fifth defender, either him be a, a safety that rolls up and becomes a linebacker in an eight-man front, or they bring one combination of an inside linebacker or an outside linebacker. It varies, plus they tie it in with line stunts all the time. It drives you crazy. Now they show a slot to the left and a quick count, and they're going to throw it that way. Plummer comes back and he hit the lineman right in the chest. Oh, baby. There was an interception. <laughs> he, he couldn't believe it. Brian Wilmer said, are you kidding me? He hit me right between the five and the three. I got a new navel with that one, and I can't hang on. What's going on out here? Well, Brian Wilmer is one of their better football players. He leads them in tackling with 39 tackles coming this ball game. But, you know, he, he doesn't picture himself as, as a pass defender or a receiver for that matter. <laughs> Third and eight for Plummer and the Sun Devils. Here goes that motion again. Now the defender will deepen so he doesn't get caught or picked off. Plummer with time comes back underneath on the juggle. First down at midfield, and so it's the motion receiver again, Ricky Boyer. But that time the defense switched when they saw that cluster formation, a group of receivers, they backed off and went zone. That allowed him to come back underneath. Good cat and mouse game being played here by two fine uh, teams, extremely well coached. Now we got 127, Dick. And we got two timeouts. Don't they have to go downfield, though, here pretty soon? They've still got 50 yards to go. Plummer now pulls it out quickly. And again, oh, that's, that's interference. Yeah, that's interference. No question. No question. He didn't even look at the ball before he came over. And Sean Williams has assessed the penalty. One reason they're not going downfield deep is they're playing a man-to-man -man underneath with two deep free safeties. Now, if you're going to beat that defense, it's better to beat it down the hole inside with somebody. Pass interference on the defense. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Here it is, the top of your screen. It's going to move inside out. See, they're playing that tight man underneath. Here it comes. Boom! Yeah, and no question. Sean Williams really nails him. I gotta tell you something, I think he had a shot at the football. Yeah, he if he would have looked at the ball. Yeah. Of course, he might have given up six if he had made it. 117. Now, Plummer, incomplete pool, makes a diving attempt. Remember in their second scoring drive, and they've really only had one scoring drive, the other was a kickoff return. Pool was the main man, but they're unable to find him very often right now. Well, right now, you can go ahead and take your safety as they did that time. They walked up number nine, Abdul McCullough, and played him tight, man-to-man -man aggressive, and say, go ahead and beat me deep because I have a teammate playing behind me. So it's tough, but they did attack the right spot of that defense. I would like to see him now do that same thing and get down the hole between those safeties. And now, Coach, it's second and 10. The ball's on the 47-yard line. Clock shows 113 remaining here in the first half. Good time to run something up inside. And here's the motion. Man. But they're going to blitz. And the running back, Redmond, the youngster, is buried at the 50-yard line as they run into it. Why'd Good call, Coach. Yeah, why do you suggest they ought to run something up inside? <laughs> I'll tell you, though, good calling by Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator. He runs a blitz right up inside, anticipating they might come with some kind of a trap or a draw up inside. <laughs> There's Rocky. 
he plays in Canadian Football League uh, football in early in his uh, out of college and in his pro career with John Shira, who was my quarterback here. And in fact, I got John Shira the Eagles from the Canadian Football League, and Rocky was playing with him at that time. What is it with Wisconsin when they meet up with the I'll Bucks? tell you what it is. They have Barry Alvarez and that man can flat coach. OK. And especially on defense. And, and you agree with me. Oh, on I know you do. Absolutely. He can flat coach and defense sometime from week to week. A great defensive coach can take a defensive team and program them to shut down what somebody's been doing. Real. Now they may give up something somewhere else. But the real good defensive coaches can do that. You know, I had one of Marion Campbell, a Ray Malavasi out here for Chuck Knox was a good one. They could take 11 guys and program them to shut down. Now, the thing is, the game isn't over. So they figure out what you're shutting them down with, and they go someplace else. There's a good football coach. I've always respected this guy. Remember, we had a lot of fun presenting Cal games when he was coaching there. That was a remarkable time. And then he beat Clemson in that the, uh, the Citrus Bowl that we did. Third down and 12. See, they're going to lock up front, play two deep safeties. Need 12 yards. Plummer goes downfield. Incomplete. Fourth down and 12 with a minute to go. And Snyder and his staff might want to seriously consider punting this one away. And here comes the punt team. He had a step on Gidry. See, now the safety's got to get over there a little bit quicker to help him out this, but he did definitely have a step. And I think the coaches, Arizona State coaches, were complaining because number 12, Paul Gidry, got his elbow on him and slowed him down a little bit prior to the ball getting here, and they felt there was interference. Lance Anderson standing inside his 40-yard line. Paul Gidry, number 12, returns from the injury list, returns punts. Good punt. Oh, oh, That's oh. beauty. But it's going to go into the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. And uh, now the Bruins with 55 seconds. And uh, how about a quick reminder about next week? There's our lineup. 3.30 back east, 12.30 Pacific time. Check with your cable operators. Maybe you'd like to see a different game that's not in your area. Or get your hands on one of those direct TV dishes. And uh, then you can watch all the action. Just sit there and just click it back and forth. How many games will you watch tomorrow? Every one. Yeah, I mean, right. Every commercial. <laughs> I do that. Every commercial, I switch to the other game. Watch it for Don't a while. Miss a game. Don't <laughs> yeah, miss a snap. You, you know, you're almost a worse junkie than I am. <laughs> Look at the performance of this guy. It's tapered off a little bit in the second quarter. Al McNown. Stands in. You know, they 16 yard line. Dick, they might want to think right now. They might want to think about taking a two touchdown lead right on into the line. They room. might want to, but they also better not force Chris Ferris, the big left tackle, to block Derek Rogers one on one because it isn't going to happen. He needs help. It is not going to happen. He's not mature enough, not fundamentally sound enough yet. Just this fifth college football game. He's going to be a dandy, but playing against that guy, he needs some help. Final seconds ticking away. That's exactly what the Bruins are doing. Put it in the hands of the fullback and uh, let the seconds tick away. Well, if you're like us, folks, you're surprised. 28 points for UCLA and a two touchdown lead over the undefeated and fourth ranked Sun Devils from Arizona State. But there's a lot of football left. And some other big stories developing today. John Saunders will have all of that along with Todd Blackledge as we continue here on ABC. It's why we're right nearby. And best of all, it's thrifty. Renting cars in your neighborhood. Ooh, best of all, it's thrifty. Coming through like you knew we would. Just a reminder, next time you need a little help getting airborne, the 50,000 employee owners of United Airlines would be more than happy to help. Come fly our friendly skies. Just because something hasn't been done before, does that mean it can't be done? 
the Chrysler Concord LXI. The Chrysler Concord, built on the belief that anything can be done. Visa salutes American Olympic champions. Look at the lovely smile on our face. And that lovely smile captured all the grace and charm that summed up Dorothy Hamill's Olympic performance as she glided to her Olympic gold. In continued support of amateur athletics, Visa today is proud to donate another $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team to support future Olympic hopefuls in their quest for the gold. For years, I dreamed of seeing Venice with my boyfriend, Tom. I'd whisper about palazzos, gondolas. All he'd talk about is deadlines and business meetings. Finally, I went and booked two romantic weeks on the Grand Canal with my Visa Gold card. Tom was completely surprised. Excuse me, what's this, Tom? Visa Gold, <laughs> purchase power to make dreams come true. It's everywhere you want to be. Valvoline Halftime 96, brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics, people who know use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. 28-14, UCLA has the lead over unbeaten Arizona State, but for Arizona State, their first trip on the road. Yeah, and John, that's a big difference. I mean, when you go on the road to play, you've got to have a different mentality. It's got to be treated like a business trip. You're not there for pleasure, and so far, Arizona State not getting it done on the field, but UCLA doing a great job offensively. Take a look at the numbers. Cade McNown, 244 yards in the air, three touchdowns. Add on top of that, 93 yards rushing by Skip Hicks. UCLA came out much more prepared to play this game in the first half than the Sun Devils. Arizona State wants us to refer to Jake Plummer as Heisman Trophy oh, yeah. candidate Jake Plummer, but it looked more like Cade McNown in the first half. Let's get to the scores and highlights. Ohio State, the number two team in the nation. Florida won today. We'll talk more about that later. But here, Carl McCullough stopped by Andrew Katzenmore as Wisconsin looked like they'd go into score. The second time they get a chance, Cecil Martin runs into his quarterback and runs into the end zone. 7-3 Wisconsin late in the first half. Stanley Jackson picked off by Lamar Campbell at the two-yard line. And that ends a threat for Ohio State, the first time they have trailed this year. Wisconsin with a great plan in the first half. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. Eight and nine guys up there to stop the run. They're putting the ball in quarterback Stanley Jackson's hands to beat him, throwing it. And that interception right before the half should convince the Badgers, hey, let's keep doing what we're doing in the second half. Florida State's trying to win at the Orange Bowl for the first time in their last six trips in there. Right now they have the lead in the second quarter, 20-16. to 16. Warwick done with an 80-yard touchdown run. Ryan Clement has a couple of touchdown passes. Baylor against Nebraska. Nebraska back to putting a lot of points on the board. Damon Benning, 18 yards out, one of three touchdown runs for Benning. The freshman, D'Angelo Evans, also had two touchdown runs. Nebraska, rather, their defense again shuts out Baylor. Well, their running game is starting to get back on track. The offensive line getting better. Baylor has trouble stopping the run, came into the game, giving up an average of 227 yards a game. Speaking of defenses, well, you always start it with A, and Alabama 7-3 to is their lead over NC State. Dennis Riddle did have a touchdown run in the game, but Alabama, again, do they have enough offense to contend for a title this year? Right now, I don't think they do. I don't think they can beat Tennessee without scoring more points or having more offense than that but they've got the great defense. That defense can keep them close in ball games. but for them to really contend for the championship, they need more offense. 7-3, that halftime score. Washington against Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish coming off that loss to Ohio State. It looks like they're bouncing back in a big way. 33-14, Autry Denton has a touchdown run. Randy Kinder as well. They're running very well. The Irish have just scored again now and converted 40-14. Notre Dame has the lead over Washington. Auburn right number 18 against Mississippi State. And Auburn has the lead in this game. Damian Craig with a seven-yard touchdown pass to Tyrone Goodson, 28-7 at halftime. UNLV against BYU. UNLV cannot stop anyone, let alone Steve Sarkeesian. He looks for Keo Keala Louie. 14 to 7, BYU takes the lead on this touchdown reception. Sarkeesian with four touchdown passes. BYU, who struggled in the one loss to Washington, their offense is difficult to stop. Well, the perfect homecoming game, bringing a team that's averaging giving up 50 points a game and then throw everything at them. Sarkeesian and Wyoming's quarterback Josh Walwork, the first two quarterbacks to pass 2,000 yards throwing the football. 
Kansas State and Missouri. Chris Candy, a 50-yard punt return for a touchdown. Easy 35-10 win there. Western Michigan, Al Moldy looking for his first win of the year, but Western Michigan and the Broncos down 35-7. Josh Walwork with four touchdown passes. Marcus Harris, two touchdown receptions. Texas and Oklahoma. You don't think this game means anything? Deion Sanders and a bunch of the Cowboys come out to watch their former coach, John Blake, was an assistant with the Cowboys. James Brown to Mike Adams, six yards. And there's that Western Michigan score as if Al Moldy hasn't seen enough of that. 17 to 13, Texas is leading Oklahoma. For Oklahoma, their special teams giving them some trouble. Yeah, they have not had any trouble moving the football all season, but every time they put their kicking team on the field, something bad happens. They gave up three touchdowns in special teams last week. This week, a block punt for a touchdown. Otherwise, they would be winning this football game at the half. Texas Tech over Kansas, 30 to 17. Zebby Lethridge with a touchdown pass and two touchdown runs. Iowa blows out Indiana 31 to 10. Tavian Banks had a touchdown run there of nine yards. Army all over Rutgers 42-21. Army 5-0 for the first time since 1985. Navy against Air Force. Tom Vanderhorst kicked the game-winning field goal with time running out as Navy gets the victory and has a terrific start. Now 4-1 on the season. Washington State and Oregon State. Sean McWashington throws a touchdown pass off the hands of Ryan Leaf, or rather catches the touchdown pass. 10-0, Washington State has the lead there. Saladin McCullough, a three-yard touchdown run as Stanford and Oregon are tied at seven apiece. In baseball, St. Louis Cardinals with a 2-1 lead over Atlanta. That series tied at a game apiece. And tragedy in college football today before the game between Fordham and Lafayette. Fordham's Bill Turney, a junior defensive back, passed away. They could not revive him. He passed out on the field and passes away at age 20. Presenting the Valvoline Xerox Big Play Rebate. Get $4 back on a case of Valvoline or $6 on a free pack of Xerox Antifreeze. It's up. It's good. Whoa, silly. People who know, use Valvoline. Wake up to a backache. And you can take four Advil in the course of a day, or six Tylenol. On the other hand, you can take just two Aleve. It says so on the label. It's your choice. Aleve, all day strong, all day long. Every morning, millions of twin blade razors raise their ugly heads. But now, there's the Norelco Reflex Action Razor, a great shave with less irritation than blades. What do you get when you cross a high-quality conventional motor oil with an advanced formula synthetic? A revolutionary oil that protects better than regular oils, yet costs less than full synthetics. DuraBlend from Valvoline. Valvoline's the number one choice of top mechanics. The Internet. Billions of miles of cable connecting millions of people, including some of the best and brightest minds in the country, the students and alumni of the Pac-10 universities. To advertise your full-time, part-time, or internship opportunity, contact your Pac-10 Career Center or call JobTrack online. 1-800-999-TRACK. Welcome, everyone, to Valvoline Halftime 96. I'm John Saunders. Todd Blackledge rejoins me in just a moment. But first, some scores and highlights. Beginning with the number one team in the nation, the Florida Gators trying to impress the voters once again so Ohio State can't creep up on them. Danny Werfel impressing the Heisman voters. Going to Redell Anthony, 13 yards here for the touchdown reception. It was 7-0 on the first drive of the game. Elijah Williams had a good day on the ground. 45 yards here as they can't stop him at the line. Florida would open a 42-6 lead at halftime, win it 56-13. Ike Hilliard with two touchdown receptions. Danny Werfel, 277 yards, three touchdown passes, and a touchdown run. Now number two all-time in NCAA history, trailing only Ty Detmer. Purdue against Penn State. The Nittany Lions trying to bounce back from their loss to Ohio State. They do just that. Curtis Enos, 177 all-purpose yards. Chris Campbell, a 59-yard punt return for a touchdown. Minnesota against Northwestern. Northwestern coming off the win against Michigan. Steve Schnur to Dwayne Bates, 66 yards on this touchdown pass. They missed the point after, but they have a 13-0 lead. They would open up a huge lead in this game, but Minnesota fights back. Corey Sauter, 17 yards to Ryan Bellwell, and it's a two-point game. Going for the two-point conversion and the tie, Sauter again looking for 2-2 Atwell. 
tippy towing along the end line, can't get there, and a two-point victory, 26-24, the final there. Brian Goins, the hero against Michigan, he missed three field goals and an extra point. Darnell Autry, though, as usual, running very well, 42 carries for 190 yards, the 19th consecutive game he's gone over 100 yards. Michigan State blows out Illinois, 42-14, Dwayne Goldburn with 144 yards in the ground and two touchdowns. Texas A&M over Iowa State by three. Troy Davis, though, had a great day. First player to gain 1,000 yards in five games in two straight seasons. 39 carries for 130 yards. Pitt blown out by Syracuse. Rob Conrad had two touchdown runs there. And in the Yankee Conference, James Madison remains unbeaten in conference play. They beat William and Mary 26-21. 3-0 now in the conference. Let's rejoin my partner, Todd Blackledge, over at the ledge. This week, we're going to talk a little defense and something that we've seen very common this year in college football. Well, John, the trend is that defenses are becoming much more aggressive. They're attacking offenses, using a lot of tight man-to-man -man coverage and putting their corners a lot of the time in bump-and-run coverage where they line right up on the nose of the receiver. Now, the origin for this was last year's Fiesta Bowl. Coaches all over the country saw how successful Nebraska was in being physical and defending this vaunted Florida offense. Coaches are notorious copycats, and right now, the four teams ranked ahead of Nebraska are all utilizing this strategy to one degree or another. Why do you use this kind of aggressive defense? Three advantages. First, it allows you to disrupt time passing routes. Now, here's a case where Florida's playing bump and run coverage on all four receivers of Tennessee. Peyton Manning wants to take the snap and throw quickly to the left but the contact disrupts the timing, he gets flustered, and ends up making a bad decision. With all the bumping and grinding that's going on in this kind of coverage down the field, the same receiver can run the same pass route 10 times, and it will never time out completely the same. The second reason you use this kind of defense, it gives you added run support. If you can lock your corners in man-to-man, -man, whether it's bump and run or off coverage, it frees up your safeties to get involved in the run game. Here, Ohio State gets nine guys against only seven blockers. The defense has the advantage by outmanning the offense. The third reason you use this kind of defense is it allows you to be more aggressive in rushing the passer. Here's Florida State. Again, they lock their corners in bump and run, that allows them to rush a couple extra guys. And most defensive coordinators around the country, John, are betting on the fact that if they can play bump and run coverage and be in man to man, they can get to the quarterback before your receiver has a chance to break open. Todd, clearly the advantage has moved to the defensive side of the ball. What sort of adjustments on offense can you make? Well, wide receivers have to become more physical. They've got to fight for position, and quarterbacks have to get used to throwing against tight coverage. Their guys won't appear wide open, but they can still stick the ball in there if they throw away from the defense. And, John, this is the thing to watch in the second half of the season, which offenses make the best adjustments. And Florida clearly has already made that adjustment. It helps when you practice against it every day. Stick around. More of our halftime report right after this. Yesterday's antifreeze coolants don't offer today's multi-metallic engines enough corrosion protection from extreme hot and cold. They need Xerox with its one-of-a-kind patented formula, not just to protect radiators, but also water pumps and cylinder heads. So use Xerox. Otherwise, your engine could be extremely unprotected. Xerox. Extreme protection for today's engines. Mike Klein's been my State Farm agent for nine years, and he's been a coach in the community for three. He's as dedicated to those kids as he is to his policyholders. The most important thing that I can do right now in my life is to protect my family in the future. The way he handles my life insurance shows it's important to him, too. My other friends who have State Farm life insurance say the same thing about their agents. You know, I think there is something to this good neighbor business. State Farm is there. A new set of academic standards for freshmen is now in effect. To practice, play, and receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen will need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a corresponding minimum score on the ACT or SAT. Ask your coach or guidance counselor about the new sliding scale and requirements. Prepare yourself now. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. Valvoline Halftime 96, brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline.
Welcome back. The second half is straight ahead. But first a reminder, next week at 3.30 Eastern Time, right here on ABC's College Football, four games, regional action. Some of you will see USC against Arizona State. Tough two weeks for Arizona State, UCLA, then USC. Well, Arizona State coming into today, their highest ranking since 1987. But USC, always dangerous because they have great athletes. Ohio State trying to march towards the Rose Bowl. Wisconsin today, Purdue next week. Yeah, next week, four of the next five weeks, Ohio State will play Big Ten teams on the road. They'll be the favored team, but they can't afford a letdown. Nebraska already has the loss to Arizona State. Still very much in the hunt. They have Texas Tech next week. Texas Tech has been very explosive on offense behind the running of Byron Hanspard, but this Nebraska defense, a little different animal. In the ACC, Georgia Tech a big surprise. In a few weeks, they get Florida State. Next week here on ABC, it's Clemson. They're a very solid football team. They were idle this week, so they should be very well rested and healthy, but Death Valley always a tough place to win. Check local listings for the game available in your area and on pay-per-view. It's time now once again to award the Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week. This week we feature quarterback Danny Werfel from the University of Florida. He has a 3.75 GPA in public relations. Here are this week's nine other student athletic winners from Division I, II, and III. Burger King and its franchises are proud to donate another $100,000 this week to the general scholarship funds of these colleges and universities. Remember, stop by your local Burger King restaurant for details on the College Football Scholarship Fund. And once again, we remind you, if you missed a score, log on to College Football Today on America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. We'll return right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hurry, girls, before Daddy gets up. Ooh, ready. Now, no more. These are Daddy's corn pops. Oh, look! Daddy's bowl is too full. <sighs> the problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, mm. is that it disappears mm. like popcorn, mm. only faster. Mommy, that's Daddy's. We share. Hi, girls. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Thanks, guys. Now, let's all go making breakfast. <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's Pops. Boo-winkle, we passed by here an hour ago. Where's here? I thought we were there. Boo-winkle. Oh, okay, it's enough TV for today. Yeah. Let's go for a ride. Yeah, come on, we're out of here. Dad, where are we going? This better be good. I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, honey, see that? See, 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 see? That's cool. Where we gotta be there. Yeah. Hey, stop, wait! Dad, can we take him home? Ford Explorer, because the world's too big to be left unexplored. We're there. If you miss the wedding, don't miss the honeymoon. After this Sunday, you'll know why they call him Superman. Lois and Clark, ABC Sunday. In an act of sudden terror... Where's the bus driver? I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge now. Her passengers became his hostages. We have a code red. Hijacking in progress. Her courage became her only defense. Let him out! Maria Conchita Alonso, Marcy Walker, Sudden Terror, ABC Sunday. Which plan puts more money in the pockets of seniors? Under Bill Clinton's plan, our huge federal government will grow another 20%, costing us plenty. The Dole plan? Our government still grows, but only 14%, to protect Medicare and Social Security. See, that's how the Dole plan will cut your taxes 15% and repeal Bill Clinton's big tax increase on Social Security. The Dole plan. More money in the pockets of seniors. These days, everybody is interested in home security. At APS, we recognize your concern, so we recommend security lighting. With just pennies a night, your lights go on at sunset, off at sunrise, automatically. We think you'll agree, brighter is better, in more ways than one. APS customers watch for a free offer with your bill. Security lighting available at Metro Phoenix Home Depot, Ace Hardware, Evergreen, and True Value stores. Some days, the struggle is harder. Some days, you just need to share that you need someone's help. Someone's shoulder to lean on. Someone to count on to care. Whatever it is, whoever you are, count on us to care. Watch the More News newscast. Watch News 15 tonight, 6 and 10. UCLA beating Arizona State 28-14 just a short time ago. Our Jack Root 
caught up with Sun Devil coach Bruce Schneider. Coach, what do you do to get some offense? Uh, uh, you know, that was our worst uh, half of football this season. And uh, we had a real good halftime. Uh, we know what to do. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Well, you know, obviously we got to try to capture the line of scrimmage, which we have not done the first half. They, they did a great job, UCLA. And, and if we can get a little bit of a run going, because I know Jake and those guys will come alive. So we'll, we'll be all right. A wake-up call at halftime? <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's earlier than that. It's about the first quarter. So Arizona State will get the first possession here in the second half. In that first half, McNown fired three touchdown passes for the Bruins. 11 yards, 55 yards, and 39 yards. The Sun Devils' biggest play, a kickoff return. No chance to return this one. Andrasik almost nailed Jack Arut down there right at the top of the head, partner. Good move. Almost. I can still dodge him. You know, Brent, you would have thought in the UCLA locker room there would have been some jubilation, some high fives. That was not the case. Very, very serious composure, not only from the players, but the coach as well. Head coach Bob Toledo told all of the players, look, we played a good first half, but what's going to win this game is consistency. Don't let up, maintain a hard-hitting attitude, and the win can be yours. But it wasn't the type of inter type of halftime you'd expect by a lead team. First down, and Plummer will throw on the initial down. He hits Poole, and Poole caught a touchdown pass in that first half, and so Poole right now working on a record as far as the Sun Devils are concerned and you can see their possessions there Dick and the pools now caught a TD pass in five straight games. Yeah and you see Coach Snyder talking about getting the running game going only eight yards rushing in the first half and, you know everything in favor here they have plus 194 yards over here in total offense time of possession by nine everything UCLA it balanced out a little bit in the second quarter. So they throw for a first down on the opening play of the half. Then they come back with the fullback, and that is Jeff Polk, number 44, the sophomore from Tempe, and he bangs into the 36-yard line. Back to the possession chart, Dick. You really look at the possession chart. There's only one time the word possession should be used, and that's this nice drive here. They lost the ball in downs there. They punted the interception and the punt. You know, good defense by UCLA, inconsistent offense by the Sun Devils. Two-yard gain for Polk. Leaves it second and eight. Now they will have one running back. And Plummer with good time. Incomplete wanted pool. And Poole was well covered on that play by the Bruin defense. This crazy, confusing UCLA defense. It was McGee that time. All they do is get the job done here today. Yeah, and they're playing tight, man, and they can play the kind of man they want to play. See, he's right on him, aggressive. That's a linebacker on because there's a safety right behind him going to help him. Now we bring it up to third and eight for the Sun Devils. Poole, he's been the go-to guy. The corner is playing soft. And Poole's down to the right. Now Plummer. Got an open man. Got a first down, busted coverage. They hit him right into the seam of the zone that time. And Lindsey Jackson has moved the chains. They will bring it up now to the 41 yard line where it will be a first down for the Sun Devils who are down here by two touchdowns. See Arizona State going to use of motion against the man coverage and I'm not sure that was meant to be a zone. I think they broke the coverage and got picked off in in that man principle. Got a lot of cutback battles for a yard. John Saunders how about the Buckeyes of Ohio State have they come alive yet. Well, Brent, they have to go to the special teams to get things started. This is John Hall, a 39-yard field goal attempt. John Lumpkin, the tight end, who's also a basketball player, gets up and blocks it. And then several plays later, Pepe Pearson from a yard out takes it in for their first touchdown of the game, and the Buckeyes grab the lead 10-7. Brent. All right, John, and out here it is 28-14 UCLA. The Sun Devils trying to mount a drive, and they've got pool now at the 19-yard line. And suddenly... This looks very efficient as you watch this passing. And Jake Plummer doing what Kay McNown did in the first half so well is throw under pressure, throw the completed pass when maybe you don't even see the, the reception. He gets nailed as he throws the ball. Here's Poole on a one-on-one -on -one situation. He needs a nice little move to the inside turns, and there's the ball. But I'll tell you this, Jake Plummer didn't get to see the throw. Blitz up inside. They don't get him. Down he goes. Now here's the handoff, and they will run number 21. That's J.R. Redmond. Redmond with the ball. from Carson. They've always turned out good high school 
football players there oh, here in Southern California. They really they have. Coach? Uh, for a long time, all the way back to when I was coaching, you always went to Carson in that area, San Pedro, and you look for some football players. And that guy certainly knows the area around here, having been with Terry Donahue as his offensive coordinator prior to taking over. So a two-yard gain by Redmond on first down. Leaves Arizona State in second and eight. Touchdown Arizona State. He took it away from the defender. And that's his second touchdown grab of the day as Javelin Gidry cannot hammer the ball away from Poole. Well, he had a big game against UCLA last year, catching uh, nine balls for 167 yards. He's going to come back and do the same thing today. But good formation usage that time. They used two tight ends and two wideouts so they could max and protect and give the quarterback, give Jason Plummer the time to throw with a nice touch. Robert Nice makes it a seven point game. Arizona State mounting a comeback. Trails the Bruins 28 21. I feel very safe in this car. People love talking about Ford Taurus. I mainly bought it for safety and security. I like the way it looks. This car is everything I need to fit my lifestyle. Feel safe, reassuring. It handles well, it hugs the road. I can turn on a dime. I finally found a manufacturer who listens to the customer. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545. It's forward moving, forward thinking, and I love being a part of that. You can't beat it. Took it to the next level. It's fall. That means two things. Football and projects. That's why we're having the True Value Kickoff Kick-In Sale. We're kicking it off by kicking in bonus items and extra savings. So you can get all those projects done and still have time to enjoy the season. Get True Test Easy Care Paint just $9.97, our lowest price of the year. We'll kick in a poster painted by an NFL quarterback free. True Value, official hardware store of the NFL and homes everywhere. Boston Market, the place that made hot hand-carved Boston Carver sandwiches famous, proudly announces the new $4 Chicken Carver combo. <clears throat> a Chicken Carver, side, and regular soft drink for $4. Hurry in for a Chicken Carver piled high with real cheese on a bakery roll, plus a freshly prepared individual side and a regular soft drink for just 4 bucks. The $4 Chicken Carver combo, only at Boston Market. Hurry in now. Offer ends October 20th. <clears throat> Brett Favre and the Packers are sending a message to the rest of the league. But Jerry Rice and the Niners aren't listening. They mix it up on ABC's Monday Night Football. Marcus Williams will kick Good pass protection here by a young running back picking up the blitz there. And then a one-on-one -on -one situation up on top. Nice cushion to throw the ball. He's not rushed. He can lay it up with a touch. And an excellent reception. Take a look at this one-on-one. -on -one. He gives him a little stick to the inside. Gets his hand on the ball thrown right there. And he just steals it from him. Excellent job. Defender could not see the football coming down. That's a tough one to defend. A year ago, Arizona State trailed UCLA by 17 at the half, 27-10. This year, they were down 14. Now, they have cut that to seven. The kickoff is fielded at the six by McElroy, and McElroy explodes up the middle. Down at the 41 yard line. Boy, you could see that hole from up here. It was wide open. The wedge for a minute didn't have anybody to hit. They didn't constrict. You know, when the wedge comes up there, four shoulders, you'll see the wedge in the middle of your screen. See those four blue jerseys going? Look at the hole right up in there. They can't find anybody to hit. They can't find anybody to hit. They've got to constrict that defense. You have to defense that wedge as well. That's where the ball's going to be. Important that the Bruins get moving. Skip Hicks, he's the tailback. Cade McNown hands now to Hicks and stopped at the line of scrimmage. And that time, Arizona State moved up with Pat Tillman into that hole. And also, Mitchell Friedman was there as we see their first half possession. And they're impressive. They're impressive. You look at the first drive, the touchdown, as we remember, then the two play drive for the touchdown. Five impressive offensive display. They bogged down a little bit there in the red zone area in the second quarter. But, uh, I think they're probably even surprised around here by coming up late corner. Yeah, those two series look very big now, don't they? The ones that they failed on when they were threatening in the first half. Here comes the blitz again. A 
and McCown almost threw an interception to the big lineman who was coming in that time. I think that's Brent Bernstein yeah. and number 94. That's a second batted ball. I'll tell you, that's fast defense at its best because the defenders aren't tested downfield. If you got a big guy like that that can jump up there at six foot eight and knock him down, and that's been part of his career. He had five career pass defense coming into this game. Now he has seven. Boy, that takes the heat off those linebackers. That time they were trying to pick a back on a linebacker. Third down at 11 for the Bruins. Arizona State rushes four. But now cannot get away from Aubrey Battle number 97. So the four rushmen beat the blockers that time. Well, I tell you, Chad Sauter got beat on the outside move by Aubrey Battle. They did a nice job of doubling up Derek Rogers out there coming at the left tackle, Chris Ferris, but Sauter, Sauter was all by himself there, and it was just a good, hard rush by Battle that got to the quarterback. He, too, is a California native. There's Redmond back deep to field Sailor's punt. There's no one lined up out there on the spot. Oh, they noticed it. Like, you see that? They should throw the ball. Well, it was Redmond that was motioning. Yeah. I think we caught it, actually, on the yeah. picture. Yeah. He saw that the man was uncovered over there on that side. The, the punt goes out of bounds. They should have snapped the ball oh, immediately and gone to it. They had an uncovered man off to the right. The sprinter was uncovered. The reason he was uncovered, he came in the game late and lined up, and they didn't see him. There were only 10 men initially, and the 11th one came on late, and there was no one on him. Most punting teams have a rule that the punter looks up and he sees his sprinter that's going to cover the punt. Not covered by a defender, you throw him the football. Arizona State with the ball on their own 28 yard line. They quickly bring it up to the line of scrimmage. Senior dominated offensive line now sitting still. The Devils down by only seven. They changed the coverage package up right now, too. And they drop it off to the fullback incomplete. The intended receiver is Jeff Falk. See now, Rocky Long did a nice job. Last time they were picked on with that one on one passing scheme. This time they come up and they go up and pressure but they leave two deep safeties back there. So that helps those people. They can free, and you're locked on. You're trying to throw a screen. Well, you've got a defender locked on that man. Now, what did that signal mean? Have a cold one at the end? <laughs> Jeff Ruckman continuing there in the defensive line. As the Bruins rushing four. Plummer fires to the tight end, dropped over the middle. And I believe that was... Zach Romero, who was working over the inside, the tight end that time, and this will leave the Sun Devils in a third and ten. You know, they're changing up with the defensive front now, and like you said, you, Brent, you said rushing four. Well, their fifth rusher, the nose guard, stood up and played pass defense in the middle. See the nose guard moving around in there. But only two down. Good blocking, fires incomplete. A great play that time, though. On the deflection was Javelin Gidry. Now he was beaten for the touchdown. He makes up for it on a nice play right there. And that's hard to cover because you're coming across the field. He's going to run away from you. Here he comes. They're trying to pick him off in that man to man coverage. They didn't do it. He got underneath him. And receiver running away from you like that across the field is tough to defense. I wonder if the Bruins might not be thinking about it. having a go here at Lance Anderson with Gidry back deep. We have seen the punting game go awry and right up the middle of that time and he booms one he drove Gidry back to the 16 yard line looking for daylight cut off and down he will go. Well I'll tell you the Sun Devils remember Gidry returned one for 70 yards for a touchdown last year again they weren't going to let him do it again. Bruins ball when we come back.
No matter how you invest or what you invest in, we make it easy. Isn't it time you have Fidelity Investments working for you? It's at home, anywhere. College football on ABC, brought to you by Ford Taurus. A look you've never seen from a name you know well. And Boston Market, carving out a better sandwich. First and ten for the Bruins. They lead Arizona State by seven. 28-21 here with 10-41. Remaining in the third quarter, this Pac-10 game unfolding in the Rose Bowl. Arizona State unbeaten and ranked number four. The Bruins came in two and two and trying to hold on and stage what would be a huge upset this year. This is Hicks. Daylight right side. Hicks battles for 12 yards and a first down at the 34. You know, when you, you spread the defense out like they did with one back in the field, um, in the backfield and spread all the way across the it, it, here's Big Bernstein right here who's been playing real well, number 94. There he is, and he's, they turn him out, see, and they cut back and run against the grain back there. You spread the defense out like that, there's more cracks to cut back in. Hicks now, 13 carries and 104 yards. Lined up behind Wallandy, the fullback. Here come the safeties to defend the run. And it's Hicks bringing it at him. He's still getting outside. They had nine people defensing the run that time, and they still got outside. Mitchell Friedman finally pushing him out of bounds on that far side, but he gained eight yards on that run. Yes, he did. He was moving up in position to defense run prior to the snap, just like they did against Nebraska. They go ahead and commit him and say, hey, we know we're vulnerable with the play action pass when you do that, but we've got to stop you from running, and we don't want you to eat up the clock. McElroy comes out wide to the left. Farmer, the slot man in that direction. Second down and two after the eight yard run. Short drop, quick fire, slot man's farmer got it. First down into some devil territory at the 48 yard line. See, that's the same formation that the last time that they were in, they ran the cutback running play. This time they get into formation, and I believe they're audibling runner pass on the line of scrimmage. That time they had more people up in position to stop the cutback that was successful a minute ago. They come up and they throw against the tight one coverage. Eric Scott and Todd McBride check into the offensive lineup for the Bruins. Slotted off to the right side of McNown, who makes the call at the line of scrimmage. Short drop, open underneath, and he hits him right now. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Wisconsin and Ohio State for the Burger King play of the day. Stanley Jackson back to the pass looking for Buster Tillman. He has it, but he's hit. The fumble is caused by Jason Suttle. Kevin Huntley picks it up and races to the end zone for the touchdown. Wisconsin regains the lead 14-10. That's your Burger King play of the day, Brent. Everybody talking about an unbeaten Rose Bowl featuring Arizona State and Ohio State folks, and both of them are losing. Never know this great game. Second down and three now. Down fakes Hicks, wants to set it. And Wallaby a nicely conceived play for a first down. See those cluster formations, then you change it and put man in motion, then you run play action, and defenders lose where the, uh, the offensive players are. Friedman, here he is. Coming all the way from the safety position. I couldn't find him right there. Came all the way over. Say, so he moved over when the tight end went in motion that way. That's a lot of ground to cover. So it's first and 10, the ball inside the 35 yard line. Bruins mounting a drive here with Cade McNown who threw three first half interceptions. This is Hicks, who's rushed for over 100 yards, and that's for one yard on that game, second and nine. Vonderahi and Friedman making the stop. 
You know, the one thing the Bruins haven't done with their offense that they have in the game plan is an option series because Cade McNown is a mobile guy and he can run the option. He's a good pitch man and they've get those constrict. You get those two tight ends and one wide, one wide out. You've got them constricted now. It might be the time to come with that option series. This is an exhausting drive for the Arizona State defense here, if nothing else, keeping them on a field for a lot of snaps. Bruins with second down. Arizona State looking for the big play. Quick pop over the middle, got the tight end. He runs free and then bowls his way. What a play by Jamal Clark, the 260 pound senior. See, they ran, they blitzed the inside linebacker. It's a hot receiver. The tight end came off to the inside, and he saw it, and he just turned and looked for the football. Good coaching principles within the scheme, and you'll see this from the end zone. You'll see the linebacker right there come. Now the tight end releases to the inside. He looks, he sees it, and he turns and just catches the ball. Good job. And that really isn't a tough principle to coach. It just takes time. So Dick, the ball is spotted at the 11 yard line for this first down. He's audible in the direction he wants to run. Prior to the snap. See, they've got to get the plays in quicker if they're going to get on the line of scrimmage and then change the play. They've got to give him more time. When that happens, it's the coach's fault. This is the third time that penalties have hurt, hurt the them. Bruins down ball inside ball the red zone. And this will make it first and 15. This is a big five yards down. right here. And here's a reminder that tomorrow on the network, America's Funniest Home Videos, Lois and Clark. And then the movie is Sudden Terror. That's the hijacking of the school bus. And that's on the network at 7 tomorrow night. So we have eight minutes left in the third. The Bruins driving, but now they have a first and 15. Sudden Terror would be a good name for a defensive team, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a football game, though, Coach. I know. <laughs> if it's not, I'm not watching uh, it. That's what I sort of figured. All right. First down now. McNown under pressure. And was that intentional grounding? No, incomplete. They wave it off. That was Pat Tillman who was in his chops. They just turned they just turning loose top left part of your screen he's going to come in there the tackle didn't turn out so the, they didn't have a back there in there to pick him up no hot receiver principle on that unless he misread it improperly but there he goes Mr. Pat Tillman in raising hell again looked like they were attempting to set a middle screen Dick the defense formed right but the offense never to, formed they wanted to throw the wide receiver screen outside well, it never did set up did it no. second down and 15. down fires middle open man deflected incomplete oh baby he had McBride he had him and he used good quarterback technique you know what he did he went back he looked and he pumped away to try to freeze pull the safety out of there and then he tried to get back behind him here we have a slot he's going to go to the post sticks goes to the post now the quarterback pumped away tried to hold the safety there and then turned back and throw it but excellent defense that time by front night front night He's knocked a few down today. Go get it, Mitch. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you, he darn near, Todd darn near got that ball anyway. He did, did that, eh? Well, here we go. Third and 15 now. Big thing is don't take a sack or turn it over. You're in the red zone. Steps don't away do from the rush man. Man. Got away from Tillman. Goes to the corner. Incomplete. Or pass interference. Was that ball catchable? It's Marcus Soward was on him. It, up from here, it looked like pass interference. That's what they call, of course, it's an automatic first down. But the ball was the ball not catchable. Yeah. But I didn't think the ball was catchable. I thought the ball was four or five feet out of bounds. Yes, it was. Pass interference on the defense. Foul was in the end zone. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line, first down. Right side of your screen, you'll see it right there. He's all over him. Then it was catchable. It was catchable. We're a long ways away from that, but you can definitely see the contact prior to the ball getting there. That's the fifth pass interference penalty. I think the second one on Mr. Soward. When you play that tight man-to-man -man coverage, you're going to get some pass interference calls. What an opportunity here for the Bruins. side with the tight end they go in that direction with Hicks touchdown UCLA by shift 
shifting the tight end from one side to the other. Instead of blocking a six foot eight, 280 pound defensive end, you're blocking a six foot two, 222 pound defensive end with your tight end. And you have a better chance of winning that battle. Good game plan. It's Merton. So, hold on, I believe there's a flag on this one. Personal foul on the offense, 15-yard penalty, replay the... That makes it sort of interesting, doesn't it? Mm. They're sitting on a uh, 34 21 lead. And the extra point comes back off the board. They're going to have to kick it again. And now it becomes more like a field goal. Well, he is excellent at this distance, Brent. 21 for 22 from the 20 to 29, 16 for 22 from the 30 to 39. He's an excellent short range kicker. When he drops off, he's outside the 40. So Bjorn, getting ready here. He's a senior from Centerville. 36 yard extra point for Off to the right. Oh, that is huge. That's huge. In the numbers business, folks. That's huge. That is a big one. I wonder who the penalty was on. <laughs> Coach won't be happy with him. My name is John Anderson, born in 1914. My age is 90. George Hartman, I'm 101. As we approach our 100th anniversary, we honor those who worked at the side of Henry Ford. Their spirit and commitment to quality lives on in every man and woman of today's Ford Motor Company. It's a fun game. You get to carry a bag, get good exercise, and you get to hit a golf ball and try to make it into this little hole. I think I'm a good golfer, but I need a lot of improvement. I want to win all the big tournaments, the major ones. And uh, I hope to play well when I get older and beat all the pros. <laughs> In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round-trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's Big Mouth Burgers. All just for playing. There's the difference in this ball game. Hicks now has rushed for 117 yards and a pair of touchdowns. That gives him eight touchdowns for the season. He now has rushed for better than 500 yards on the season. And Arizona State simply does not have a running back who can answer those numbers. But a missed extra point makes it 34-21. That's a 13-point lead instead of a 14. And now J.R. Redmond goes back deep along with Farlow. Yeah, there it is. There's, There's a, a short kick. kick. They go to catch it. Ah. Out of bounds. Oh, they had it. It was right there, and he didn't come up with it. On the practice field Thursday, that kid caught that ball in the air. They executed it. Beautiful. Look at it. He knows what it is. This guy's got some guts. He's going to take some chances. He just took one there, coach. <laughs> Okay. Okay. He just outsumed the responsibility. Gosh darn it. But I tell you, that was still close right there. It looked like he had it when we watched it on the monitor the first time, Dick. It looked like he... See, he got it down for a field just a little further than the sprinter right there to the right side of your screen could get to it. See, and then the ball bounced back. He ran past it. It's Thursday, he caught it in the air. Well, now let's see what Jake Plummer can do with this field position as the ball is put where it went out of bounds at the 37-yard line. They will run battle on first down and battle to the 44-yard line. 
Will Jackaroot come in here and tell us all about Jake the Snake? Well, Brent, contrary to what you may have heard, yes, he's afraid of snakes, but the nickname doesn't come from the way he slithers away from people. According to his mom, it came back when he was about 12 years old. His older brother spied him reading Kenny Stabler's autobiography. He says, hey, that's what we'll call you, the snake. He said, no, I don't want to. But then his brother set him up in a Little League game. They introduced him as Jake the Snake Plumber, and it stayed ever since. Well, he made it out like Stabler that time, running the ball to the 46-yard uh, line. I'd say he was a little young to be reading that one. <laughs> <laughs> a little snake, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jake, Ward and Williams. Throwing against us one time was at the Rams. <laughs> Well, Bruce Snyder told me that this team has done a great job of handling the different situations positively. And boy, this is a different situation. They have to handle positively to get back in it. This is third down and a pair here. Great blocking. Short. Yeah, it had good blocking. That play should have been more successful. Now, I think the running back really, as he looks at this uh, tomorrow on game tape, should have taken that back up underneath. You see what I'm talking about? At the bottom of your screen, the guard will pull out. That's Pat Thompson coming around, and the, see, there's a little hole back up inside there, but good, this gives some credit to the defender there. Good penetration, and tripped him up. That's Sawanga who came in there and made that play defensively. You get the feeling now that the fans here in the Rose Bowl are starting to believe, and if anything, the crowd grew at halftime. Folks love an upset. When you look around here, I think some people came on in to see what was happening here. And Gidry will let this one roll on into the end zone, and the Bruins are going to take it out on the 20-yard line. Well, as we saw coming in here, there were a lot of parties going on. The barbecues and a cold beer here and there and some ribs being cooked. And don't eat too much going to the airport back there. I know you have one lined up. But anyway, hold the people, parties. Cook. Yeah, the, those people sitting out there listening to the game, and then, hey, maybe they're filtering in now. we got one to watch. Now the Bruins with the ball in the lead down at the 20-yard line. And the Arizona State defense. They've got to take some chances to come up and take the ball away. You know they have not had a defender, a secondary player, intercept the pass this year. Zero. Other people have, but not a deep pass defender in the secondary. Good down. And this is the big running back Hicks who stopped at the 20-yard line, and this will be second and ten. So here is the Pac-10 so far today. Washington being hammered in South Bend. They fell back early. Washington State has jumped on Oregon State. And Oregon by a field goal over Stanford. California idle today. Now in the Big Ten. Unbeaten Ohio State losing by four in the fourth. Penn State big today. Northwestern hangs on. Holds off the two-point conversion. Iowa with a big win. And Michigan State comes up big as Michigan is idle. I'll tell you, if Ohio State loses and Arizona State loses, then who's going to the Rose Bowl? Here's McNown. Down at the 26-yard line. And that was Derek Ford, defensive end, making the play for the Sun Devils. Derek Ford demonstrating that he, too, has speed filling in there at Derek Rogers' position. We know Rogers can fly. We didn't realize that Derek Ford could run as fast as he could. He's from Villa Park here in Southern California. Played in North-South Shrine game for the Shrine team, and that used to be a great Shrine game in the state. I imagine it still is. Buckeyes just jump ahead with still time remaining there. 34-21 Arizona State trails here and UCLA with a third and four. McNown gets it off as he's hit. Complete to Scott. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line. First down, Bruins. And again, McNown takes a wallop and delivers the football. They've had some problems all game with that little slot motion. And then they go back, come inside, see man in motion, middle of your screen. Now he goes back up. They try to rub off any kind of man situation right there. Here, it just, this is excellent throw. The defender could not stay in touch with him. That's Mitchell Freedom. Friedman, he's a safety now, but look at that. That's the third time we've seen him complete a pass, and he may not have got to, to see the ball be caught. A lot of pressure. Ball on the Bruins 44-yard line with an official timeout right now. 3.52 remaining here in the third quarter with Dick Vermeil and Jack Aroot. I'm Brian Musburger. In case you just joined us late, UCLA struck early and often in the first half and led it 
28-14 at the intermission. It is now 34-21. Arizona State did tie the game briefly on a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown after they fell back by seven. When the Bruins went up 14-7, they've held it, and McNown firing down the middle, incomplete. Pass by McNown is incomplete. John Saunders, uh, show us how the Buckeyes jump back into the lead, partner. Well, Brent, they have been trailing most of the game, as you mentioned, here at the 48-yard line. Stanley Jackson to Dimitri Stanley, who does most of the work. A couple of Badgers run into each other. He gets the touchdown, and it's now back on top for the Buckeyes. 17-14 with about nine minutes to go. Brent? And John here, Caden McNown having a career day for UCLA. The sophomore has now passed for 308 yards. That's his career high. He's hit 18 of 31, three of the 18 for touchdowns. Second and 10. This is Hicks, who's rushed for better than 100, and he has swarmed at the 45-yard line after rushing for a yard. Jack, what about Skip Hicks? Well, Brent, we saw Hicks go in for a touchdown a little while ago. We've seen Hicks actually carry for over 100 yards today. But take a look down on his left leg, down by his knee. He's got a knee brace on. After he scored that last touchdown, he was all out of breath. He ran back to the sidelines. They said, what's wrong? He said, my knee brace is too tight. It's cut off the circulation. My leg's asleep. <laughs> Maybe they ought to keep it asleep. <laughs> Third down and nine. Passing formation for the Bruins. McNown throws against the pressure, and it was well diagnosed. They simply slipped the fullback, Caldwell, out of the backfield, makes his first reception of the game, and they make it pay off. But I believe there is a penalty flag down on this play. There is a penalty. But I'll tell you this, the defensive secondary that time was confused. Prior to the snap, they were trying to get lined up properly. This mask on the defense, five-yard penalty mark from the end of the run. Here, there's Tillman. He's been a factor, and now he gets, ooh, he gets drilled. <laughs> a little acrobatic move. Here's Cheyenne Caldwell right there getting upfield with the football. But the secondary was confused prior to the snap, and they turned him loose as a result. <laughs> they got a couple guys with that kind of hair. I thought that style was out, especially in Arizona. so hot. <laughs> First down and 10. The ball at the 37 and the Bruins mounting another drive as the penalty is tacked on the face mask. Now changing up the play. Short drop fires complete. McBride, who caught one of the three touchdown passes in the first half, has been like driven out of bounds with emphasis on that far side, and now he gets into it with Tillman. You know what they're doing is when they see the slot coverage, the wide receiver in the slot and the defender backed off seven, eight, nine yards, they're audibling to a little quick stop in front of him. That's about the second or third time they've done it, and it's been with an audible each time. See, it's a very simple throw. It's just like running the football. Second down and three. All right, take a seat. And the numbers continue to mount. Well, they said that he had to have a big game to be in it, and he's having it. He's having a monster. And Hicks going nowhere as Tillman makes the play at the 36-yard line. Big defensive play for the Sun Devils. He's such a smart football player, but for when a linebacker comes in and makes a negative play like that, the defensive coordinator has to call the stunt or the defense that allows him to run through and make that kind of play. That was a good change up by Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator. There's Phil Snow right there. You know, this defensive team, under his leadership, went from the last defense in the Pac-10, number 10, to coming into this game, number one. And look at third down. They've done a great job at 21% this year. Last year, 45% successful against them. You throw it out the that's, not legal, that's not a legal formation. the one that counts. Third and seven, there's the call. There's the call, and it's coming back, and there's a penalty, although the pass is incomplete, and that was third down. So they'll go ahead and decline this. That was five guys in the backfield. Decline this, and you've got a fourth and seven now. And the ball is back at the 36-yard line almost. <laughs> Dick, what was wrong with the formation? There were five guys in the backfield. Again, huh? Yeah, that's, again. That's, that's the second, second time. Yeah. Second time. All right, here we go. One that in the backfield, two in the backfield, three in the backfield, four in the backfield. And this guy counts in the backfield, too, the quarterback. 
See, that Here man should have been on the line of scrimmage. Penalties decline be fourth down. Yes. Fourth down and eight yards to go. Ball at the 35 yard line. Now the Bruins would like to pooch punt and bury the Sun Devils, but they're instead going to try a long field goal here. Well, I'll tell you try this. Merton here, Dick, and you said that this is not N not necessarily a field goal. They'll get a field goal rush with no safety back now because they're in field goal. But he's just as apt to punt this football. This is oh sure. Just snap it right to him and let him pooch punt. Yeah, that's there right. it is. There it is. See, it, that's it. There it is. Let it roll down there. Let it roll down there. Let it roll down. Beautifully executed. Very well done. Beautiful. That's why the coach goes to practice on Thursday. <laughs> I had to stop by Hollywood Park to see some old friends over there at the casino. See how they put the with the Santa Anita races. You know what I mean, coach. They said to say hello over there, some of your buddies. <laughs> really well done. You know, I'm surprised we don't see more of this, really, because a lot of guys put pressure of the field goal kicker, and when they have a lead, they're trying to hit a 52 and 54 yarder, and Bobby says, that's the way to go. <laughs> uh, hey, what, he was the head coach at University of Pacific, you know, and, and did some good things there, but it's a lot different trying to win there than it is here. He's going to have players here he can win with, and he's going to coach him. He reminded me a little bit of Earl Bruce over there. Yeah. Pitch that belt up there. Yeah, he'll you know, you know, take a cold one once in a while. <laughs> And a guy, first and ten, Plummer coming out deep. Got him. He's got his man. Pull goes up in the air and can't hang on this time. Incomplete. Underthrew him just a touch. Yes, he waited too long to let the ball go. On that kind of throw, you have to get set up and let it go as a quarterback. He's got the man coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. He goes up inside him, then he widens him, and he comes underneath him right there. But the ball was thrown too late. That's why it's too short. And he still had a chance to catch that football. Sure did. Slip right to him. Paul Gidry back there on defense that time. Fresh set of legs in that secondary. Second and ten. Time remaining in the third. And they will run Terry Battle for a couple of yards out to the four-yard line. Maybe about a yard, actually, on that play as the final minute begins to tick away here in the third quarter. This defensive scheme brought here by Rocky Long. He was the defensive coordinator at Oregon State last year, and they were the number two defense in the pack last year at Oregon State. It's a different scheme. And for three days of preparation with college kids, and remember the time you can practice and study and everything, is limited by, by rules. And it's hard to get ready to play that front. Let's see what Plummer does against it. Third and nine. From the end zone. They're in trouble. Slips free on the run and down he goes at the two yard line, wrapped up by Weldon Ford. Weldon Ford did not start. He has been playing that position, the nose guard position, but Jeff Ruckman started in that spot today and he's fighting to get that starting job back. Out of Loma Linda, California, Redlands High School. That's a big play, forcing him to punt from there. He doesn't have the full spread punt depth that he normally has. We'll return with the fourth quarter between Arizona State and UCLA after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Here's something I want you to think about. Discus Athletic. Athletic were made for whatever you like to do. Like biking, football, and for you Europeans, football. One brand for every sport. You can't say that about these outfits. My, the unitard. That is special. Unnecessary spending. 20 yards. So, no matter what your game, choose discus athletic. One thing to wear. But pick your colors carefully. Look, you're not going to believe this, but Goodyear retailers have lowered prices at amazing 25% on some of their most popular passenger, light truck, and performance tires. So call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Hurry, this sale ends soon. Get your hands on the Ford Citibank card. And start earning 5% in Ford rebates. I save you money. On Ford cars and trucks, even Lincolns and Mercuries. Call for the Ford Citibank card today. ABC Wednesday, Drew's at a special time. Mimi's been sent to the basement where she's become the phantom of the office. Download this. Just Drew it at a special time, ABC Wednesday. 
You take responsibility for yourself and your family. President Clinton is making people on welfare take responsibility. He signed tough welfare reform, work requirements, time limits, forced teenage mothers to stay in school or lose benefits. The next step, create jobs. Tax incentives for businesses that hire welfare recipients. Job training for all workers. Dole Gingrich tried to cut job training. Wrong for our future. President Clinton, moving people from welfare to work, meeting our challenges. In the world of tools, there's only one true craftsman. Craftsman makes anything possible. Oh, yeah. You're watching KNXV TV Phoenix, seen on these translators. Nerves. He wants that snap. They're loading he wants up on Chris him Finn just to put it right in his hands so he can get it out of here now, and you'll see him coming. And he drove a beautiful punt. He drove Gidry back to the Bruins 45 yard line. And the coverage is outstanding. That was Isaiah Mustafa with the tackle. This is the kind of day we've had in the Rose Bowl. The sights and sounds of what could be a huge upset. Now the Bruins with the ball on their own 43 yard line and Price replaces Hicks as the lone running back. He'll get the first carry swinging out to the left and he makes his way for a yard and no more as Rashada makes the play. See they get in that triple formation with a tight end and two receivers outside him to try to soften the corner then run toward it but good defense by the end not so much the guy yes he makes the tackle he should make the tackle but good defensive end play that time. I believe holding has been called against the Bruins on this play there was a Sun Devil defender shaken up also on that far side. And you can see number 50, Scott Bondarahi coming back. Mark from the end of the run, it'll still be first down. Well, he's been playing very hard, and in, in the two games that I studied game tape, I didn't see anybody else really going. Ron McCook, number 53, comes in and plays as his backup. But this guy is the leader of the defense. He's from the junior college transfer here in the area, Saddleback uh, Community College. He was a junior college All-American, and, and the conference MVP on defense. He's a football player. They're going to miss him if he can't get back on that field. There are only two plays out of this football game right now. Down 13, that mix extra point, that long thing. There are only two out of it. First and 19 after the 10 yard penalty. Shot formation to the right. You're looking out for the Bruins. Now and off a short drop deflected, and that's the danger zone. When the pass is deflected like that, it sometimes can be picked off, but that'll now be second down. That's the third time today he has deflected a pass. Very good job, good reaction, and defensive line coaches coach that stuff. Kevin Walthausen, the defensive line coach, those responses don't happen automatically. People teach him to respond. He was blocked on the line of scrimmage, but with a six foot eight frame, you can get up there and still bat that short pass down. It's like throwing over a telephone pole. Second down and 19. Bruins elect to keep it on the ground. Run it out to the 37-yard line. You know, another thing they've done is they've started to take the linebacker. In, in the first half, remember, we showed you some shots of the fullback going in and taking on the linebacker and winning the battle. And the linebacker was waiting for the fullback. Now, that time, Ron McCook, the inside linebacker, crossed the line of scrimmage and took the fullback on. It was a heck of a collision, but no room for the running. Good change up on the staff. There's a good football player in Sean Sueda, who's down right now. He's a good player. He's from Phoenix. They call him the Rock because he's such a good run defender. Ooh. 
Well, let's go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, one of the things that I'm most impressed with is just how tough UCLA has played today. You know, in the past, they kind of talked about, ah, UCLA, kind of soft around the middle, really not a lot of heart. Maybe one of the reasons is because Bob Toledo imported a new strength and conditioning coach this year. Yoxall, Kevin Yoxall, they call him Yox for short. He came in with an Olympic-style training regime. A lot of time in the weight room, only about 25 to 30 seconds between reps. He said, you're going to learn how to be tough. The players hated it, but they said when they get in the second, and specifically the fourth quarter, they really begin to feel it. The conditioning is positive. It's third and 17 for the Bruins. McNown can't find a man open. No, he the race and oh, he dropped the interception at the 40-yard line. He should not do that. That is Tillman, who is on the grass. See, they stunted inside and pushed him to the outside. They had Rodgers doubled with the tight end and the tackle, and Rodgers tried to beat him inside. That The stunt got in there, and he should never. Here's the stunt. Here's the tackle coming around. That's battle number 97 that forced him up in there. Now, he should not do that, especially. This has been part of his profile in the past, turning the ball over in that situation. See, he cannot do that. Sailor back. Mr. Redman with good speed. Set to return now for the Sun Devils. He's got a cushion. Oh, no, he's pushed down at Woo. the 22 yard line. Nice job there by Philip Ward. So Ward does the job, and we'll be back. Hey, help me figure this out. Usually, the more gizmos you want, the more money you got to spend. Then there's a Chevrolet Cavalier. It gives you a lot of the same gizmos that make expensive cars easy to live with for about half the price. If you forget to lock your doors, the Cavalier is still protected by a gizmo called the theft deterrent system. If you leave your dome light on, it turns it off. My house doesn't even do that. Get the car that's easy to own, the Cavalier. Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. FedEx uses over 500 airplanes to handle your two-day package. Cost, about $12. UPS uses over 500 airplanes to handle your two-day package. Cost? About $6. The U.S. Postal Service uses over 15,000 airplanes to handle your priority mail two- to three-day package. Cost? $3. So, 12, 6, 3, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. Powers meet in a key conference showdown when Arizona State tackles the Trojans of USC for other regional action next Saturday on ABC's College Football. Wisconsin against Ohio State. Now, this is following an interception. Josh Jackson has his field goal blocked by the Badgers, and they go back to work trying to march for a game winning touchdown. But on first down, Mike Samuel is intercepted again. Back to back interceptions. This one by Damon Moore. And the Buckeyes trying to hold on with about two and a half to go. Brent. John here, of course. Arizona State needs a rally. Jake Plummer completes a pass to Poole, who is smacked at the 35-yard line. That's a gain of 12 yards on first down. Arizona State moves the chains. And that was a great term. He really did get smacked. Coming in on the slant, and you'll see Williams, number 32, move inside out and give him a shoulder and forearm right there. Now that would impress me as Poole jumps up and sort of looks back and says, hey, you can't keep me on the ground. Poole with seven catches today for 112 yards and two touchdowns. First and ten, and they flex the H-man off. That's Kindle who steps in motion. Strength of the formation is over there on that side. They've had a real tough time blocking the inside of that defense. It's moving all the time. That time, the nose guard was standing up in a two-point stance bouncing around. You'd like to believe we could handle it, but there's a lot of stunning going on. Dick, we're left to wonder if maybe Martin hasn't been nicked a little bit in this game because instead of Battle, who was in there for the series, now it is the freshman Redmond. And uh, they're carrying the bulk of the running load here. Second down and seven. Plummer 
sets the screen and it is dropped. So it'll be third down just as well. He would have lost a yard had he caught that ball. Well, they were up in tight man coverage. When he came back to the inside, he just followed him back down the inside and, and made the play. Good job by Paul Gidry doing exactly what he's coached to do. And Philip Ward, number 97, was able to get a hand on that football also on that pass. So he's been a factor now. Third and seven. Uh, Jack, what do you hear quickly about, uh, about Martin? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's let this play go, and then we'll tell you the story, Brent. Third down and seven. Plummer steps away from the blitz, cuts back, first down, midfield. Jake the Snake to the 42-yard line. That became a quarterback draw. Man coverage, that really, the, the coverage was so good, he couldn't get a man open, didn't panic. He just takes the ball right up to the inside. Now, you'll see it open to the inside of the screen. Rush gets to the outside. Nice hole right up in there. He wants to throw it. He sits in there, takes the time. It's not there. He just makes it a quarterback draw. The other thing he should have done is he should have slid in there. Shouldn't take a hit like that. He's got a long season to play. Well, that is the longest run by an ASU back today. That 20 yarder right there by Plummer. So it is first down at the Bruin 42. Plummer, receivers covered again, and this time he's swamped at the 46. Now, Jack, let's. Uh, figure out why Michael Martin's not playing. Well, Brent, if you noticed, you haven't seen him in there since about midway in the first quarter. It seems that what happened is he took a real hard hit up in his neck area on the left-hand side. Now, they iced it down, and they have kept him out for the rest of the game. In fact, he's taken the pads off. He's taken his, his put his street clothes on, and he's out for the day. A tough break for that young tailback. Yeah, he's the kind of runner that runs well against a stunting, a stunting defense because he slashes. He's a non-hesitation guy. He goes up the end. Second down and a long 12 for the Sun Devils. Try to run the draw, and Redmond goes down. See, they're firing those inside linebackers like that in through those gaps. See, they're not trying to control a gap. They're trying to penetrate the gap and, and cancel a gap so there's no place to run in there. And they've been very, very effective. Now, there's 11 minutes left here in this ballgame. This is a third down and a long 12, but it's at this point where Arizona State has to be thinking about two downs to get the first down. It's getting a little bit late. You're not down one score now. You're down two. But let's see what Plummer and the Sun Devils have got coming here on third down. The Bruins rush four. Offensive line holds, but no receiver open. Plummer on the move. Fires back. Backman is intercepted at the 21-yard line. And Gidry stepped in there and made the interception for the Bruins at the 10:38 mark a costly turnover see what they were in they were in a double a two deep safety with man coverage underneath and they just locked on see and he had no place to go he gets back he has time he sets up they stun it inside he has time now he starts to scramble out of there and, and the corner was rolled up tight backed up by the safety just turned around and picked it off there it is to the middle of your screen there. You'll see him. He's playing him real tight. You'll see the safety appear from the left side of the screen now. He's going to double it. You can afford to be that aggressive. Not a good decision by Jake. Now it is important for McNown and the Bruins to go to work on the clock. Folks, they can start dreaming about that upset now. Don't turn it over. Protect the football. Come with the big running back. Hicks comes right straight ahead to the 25. Gains three yards on his first down carry. Dick, now at what point does Arizona State go all out gambling on defense, try to get the football away, anything they can here? Well, right then, with that first down snap, they had the seven-man front, and prior to the snap, both the free safety and strong safety came moving right toward the line of scrimmage. They know that UCLA is going to run the football, so they just committed nine guys prior to the snap to stop the run. You left wondering, I suppose, about Arizona State. As you know, they played all five of their victories back in Tempe. They came here. They thought maybe it was a it was a holiday, perhaps. I really didn't read that in them. And in, in talking with the coaching staff, I didn't read that in them. I tell you, it's tough today to go through a conference undefeated. It really it's going to be tough for Ohio State if they go ahead and win today in that, in that Big Ten. You know, these conferences, the coaches are doing a good job. They're spreading the athletes around with the scholar limit, and scholar, scholarship limit. It's just tougher. Well, here's a second down and seven. This one still has a ways to go. Ten minutes in the fourth quarter, but the Bruins are up 34 to 21. This is Hicks to Tony to the left. This will leave the Bruins with about a third and five coming up right now. So a big play coming up. Yeah, what they should be doing too now is thinking of clock control. 
get up there, take your time, use the whole clock, snap the ball one second prior to it, the, the, the clock run, running out on them. You know, eat as much time as they can, keep the ball inbound, but still try to move the football. You know, that second turnover moments ago was very costly, wasn't it? You bet. When you're minus two at any point, you're not going to win many football games. So here's the third and five for the Bruins. Cade McNown. They're coming. The toss now. And this is Price. Price is ganged up on, and he will not get it. Yeah, they were coming prior to the snap. They brought everybody up there. Rashada got up there to make the play, but other people just screwed it all up. See, the right off. There's more people to, uh, coming to play defense than they have to block in this situation. You'll see all those gold helmets or orange helmets, whatever color they are. There's just too many guys to block, and you just string it out, push it to the sideline, and then the safety makes the play. Sailor. And the Sun Devils show 10. They press the wide men. Redmond, the freshman, back to return. He returned one all 68 yards. He didn't get credit for the touchdown because he fumbled before it went in and it was recovered for the touchdown. But he has those kinds of ability, that kind of ability. Middle. Nice and there. here's Redmond. Waits now for a blocker. Gets it. Nothing doing. Good coverage by the Bruins. Down at the 30-yard line. We're coming back. 8.21 to go. One fall, we took out our son's favorite sweater, and it didn't fit anymore. I think life insurance is like that. You don't realize how much your life has changed until you take out your policies and sit down with your agent. That's why we have the State Farm Family Insurance Checkup. I can help you see if your coverages are up to date or if you've outgrown them then you make the decision. A policy has to fit, just like a sweater. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Some of the most admired cars you'll see are owned by the guys who know cars best. They're ASC certified master mechanics. And the number one brand of motor oil these guys use in their own cars and trucks is Valvoline, makers of DuraBlend, the leading semi-synthetic for a cleaner engine due to better control of harmful deposits. So use the oil the mechanics who take care of your car use to take care of theirs. Valvoline, people who know use Valvoline. It takes 43 face muscles to make a frown. But if you drive a Lumina LS, you won't have to worry about using any of them. Because Lumina LS can go 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. No six-passenger car in its class can offer you as many standard safety features for the price. And best of all, you can afford it. The cars more Americans trust. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be, and Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. UCLA upsetting Arizona State, 34-21, 8-21 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Sun Devils with the football. Plummer has time, but receivers are covered, and now on the move, deep right, looking for somebody to break. He'll just take it out of bounds on that far side, and he steps out at the 38-yard line. One of the things to keep in mind about this game is that even though the Bruins are 500, two and two, they are unblemished in the Pac-10 conference. Now Arizona State at two and zero. Oh, tied with idle California but the Bruins can join California atop the Pac-10 with a win today Washington losing a non-conference game so it becomes anybody's chase and USC can get right back into the thick of things with a win now on second down Redman breaks to midfield See, they can afford to go ahead and loosen up that run defense and get people in position to go ahead and rush the passer. They're playing that man coverage underneath with two deep safeties, so they're having a hard time just to spring somebody free. I think they should go back a little bit to that man in motion series that they were using earlier. We can see that SC is underway in the Coliseum against Arizona. And Washington State coming up big behind Ryan Leaf today. Plummer, receivers covered again. He's going to hook it. Wanted to get the 
sidelines cut back and the Bruins won't let him get it. But the clock could stop if that's a first down. First down the linesman says at the 40 yard line. Waswa Sawanga the rover back coming over now with 747 on the clock. Quick score is what the Sun Devils must have here. There is the final the Buckeyes rally 17 14 they stay unbeaten. But there was all that talk about the Buckeyes climbing to number one won't happen. The Gators were very impressive today against LSU. They buried them. Oh, my 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 Oklahoma finally doing better than the odds makers expected. Been a long long dry spell for those Sooners. 747 34 21. The coverage people are doing a super job downfield. You notice how many times he's been forced to scramble now. That's why he's getting rushing yards now up 37 pass yards total offense. Pretty good. I'll tell you this. He doesn't want those rushing yards. He wants big plays in the passing game and the secondary coverage with that tight man backed up by safeties is really bothering him right now. Two big plays from pulling this out. Bummer, short drop throws has the open man underneath and he breaks free. Here comes Boyer. On that far side, they slipped the tackle on him, and Boyer inside the 25-yard line. See, they change up the coverage that time, and they go ahead and blitz. Now when you have man-to-man, -man, you, you don't have a backed-up safety. So if you beat him, see, they try to rub off there with a slant and a straight pattern. He doesn't make the play. Now there's no backed-up safety to come and make the play right now. Don't go back to that coverage. 17-yard game. Ball inside the 25. Plummer stands, throws, ends up, Mitch Touchdown, Arizona State, Kenny Mitchell. Was that a beautiful throw? I mean, that was a difficult throw, and he threw it right where he had to throw it. But a minute ago, Brent, you said they needed a big play to get right back in it, and he just gave it to him. A beautiful throw. Can't do it any better. I see why people rave about this guy, and I really believe he is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. He reminds you a little bit of, of the original snake. Stabler bringing him back like that. Now remember, extra points. Huge right now. Robert Knees, the junior from Bakersfield. A six-point lead as the Bruins missed their last extra point. That still looms huge as you watch Kenny Mitchell, the sophomore from Peoria, Arizona, make the catch of the day for Arizona State. Some guy came into me after the race and asked me which Labonte was a better driver. Oh, really? What'd you tell him? I told him I was. <laughs> Why'd you tell him that? I am. No, oh, you're not. Yeah, I am. Uh-uh. Well, who won Richmond? <laughs> well, who won Michigan? <laughs> well, who won Bristol? <laughs> who won Charlotte? <laughs> well, who won the championship? Oh, man. Who, who drives a Monte, Monte Carlo? Carlo? Genuine Chevrolet. The cars more champions trust, including the better Labonte. Who's a better athlete? Who's a better actor? Who's a better singer? In an age of streamlining and downsizing, Chili still makes its big mouth burgers by hand, one at a time, by a person. What this lacks in efficiency is more than made up for in taste. Chili's big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Play football at Chili's this season. In every restaurant, you can win two round trip tickets on Southwest Airlines to anywhere they fly. A football or Chili's big mouth burgers, all just for playing. We have a wonderful 75 Lac Louis Cabernet. Or an exquisite 58 Le Boussemillon. Or a 62 Jevoux Pinot if you're in the mood for... Uh... No, 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 no. Enough of that old stuff. The lady and I would prefer something fresh. How about something in a lager? What do you got in a Budweiser from, say, early this month? Budweiser. Guaranteed fresh with born-on dates. Uh -huh. Jake Plummer putting Arizona State in overdrive. They're down six, 34-28. 7.24 to go. This is the team that shut out Nebraska. Now trying to battle back in their first road game. 5-0 on the year. This is going to be a real check now from the offensive coach's standpoint. Alan Borges, the coordinator at UCLA. And, and of course, Bobby Toledo, the head football coach. So what approach they take offensively. McElroy and Brown set to return this kickoff right now. Marcus Williams. 
throws it to McElroy way deep in the end zone takes a knee coming out on the 20 yard line now 724 and uh, this bit of a gut check for the Bruins here. It is a gut check now you decide how you're going to try to move the ball what confuses me as a guy up here looking down on it they were playing a, a man underneath coverage with two free safeties forcing the quarterback to scramble every time they were in it here in that last series and as soon as they got into one on one a one on one situation like that they beat a beat for the big play why not stay with what's working for you. You can see the comparison between the two halves for the left hander Cade McNown. But what's important, he hasn't thrown an interception. Almost did a short time ago, but he did not. Now, first down, and Hicks is the big running back. They're going to bump ball. It's loose. And Arizona State goes and recovers. Woo! Sun Devils ball. A long handoff to Hicks. The exchange, not a good one. And the fumble is recovered. That was Damian Richardson of Fresno dashing off the field with the football. They call that a stretch play where the, you're going to try to reach and get outside with the quarterback sprints to the, the mesh point to hand it off. And you see he can't get to him. He can't get it to him. The running back Hicks is running away from him a little too flat, and he can't get it implanted properly. UCLA's wow. first turnover, and it's a critical one. And Hicks is down on the grass. The Bruins running back at the 7-17 mark. Dale Rudd, Dale Rudd, the trainer for the UCLA Bruins and staff out there attending to him. Well, let's take a break. Officials call a timeout. We're coming right back. These two VCRs are identical, but the one on the right has something the other one doesn't. A lower price. Circuit City. You can't find a lower price. We guarantee it. Get more boombox for your buck. Circuit City. You can't find a lower price. We guarantee it. Take a stroll down memory lane at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You crushed my knee. It was your toes. You broke my ribs. It was your nose. Ah, yes. Oh. I remember it well. You sacked me once. I sacked it twice. In pouring rain. No, it was nice. Ah, yes. I but when you go, don't forget well. your Visa card, because the hall takes the NFL's best, but not American Express. Say, so, yeah, Nitschke. It's Butkus. Ah, oh, yeah. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. My office will have a window. Someday, my boss will be me. Someday, I will meet the man of my dreams. Guess not today. The Chevy Camaro's 200 horsepower 3800 V6. Therapeutic, isn't it? Well, a round of applause for Skip Hicks, who is up and being assisted off to the sideline. And 7-17 uh, to go, 34-28, a six-point UCLA lead. But after the Bruins' first turnover, Arizona State at the 15-yard line with first down. Poole comes out on the field. The running back is Redmond as Michael Martin, out with that injury, will not return for ASU today. Come with Redmond, and he has stopped at the 15 yard line, a gain of about one. This is going to be second and nine. They haven't run the ball well all day. Why go away from what you've been doing real well? Play action. Actually, the passing game has been a scramble situation mostly in the second half, other than that beautiful throw. They're spreading him out right now. Bounce him up with two tight ends, Brent. Looks like the UCLA is going to blitz. Overload to the right. They'll run the toss. It's a halfback option. He's going to throw back. Here's Plummer. Plummer's got it. Seven yard line. Cuts to the five. Touchdown. Arizona State. Jake the Snake. They've got all the tools. Folks. But right 
write it down right here. <laughs> the man's a legitimate candidate for player of the year in college football. He has already authored a shutout of mighty Nebraska and now a critical extra point. Robert Neese pounds it through. A one point lead for the Sun Devils. Uh, that's the old quarterback throwback pass. Legal in college football. The ball goes away. I'm thinking when I saw this, what's he trying that halfback pass that was intercepted for? This time he turns and throws it back, but now look at the running ability of this guy. What a competitor. Here it is. He's going to go ahead. He's going to toss the ball deep to the tailback. He uses motion to block over there at the point. Tosses it deep. Quarterback rolls out. Now, normally, either a defensive end will peel with the quarterback or a linebacker is supposed to stay with it. Nobody covered him, and just good running ability, and they take the lead. And now I know why Bruce Snyder told me last night, he said, Dick, these kids are really responsive to the situation they find themselves in. They found themselves down and out of it, and they brought themselves back. They were down 28-7, to Coach. 9.35 remaining in the second quarter. They have now taken their first lead of the day with 6.33 to go, 35-34. Right, and you know, in Jack Roots interview with Bruce coming out at halftime, he didn't seem flustered. He didn't seem in a panic frame of mind like I would have been. <laughs> it isn't over yet. No, either. it's not. McElroy and Brown are back deep, and this one is pounded out of the end zone. Bring it out of the 20-yard line. Even the kicker's fired up. <laughs> oh. Metro college football. No game like it. Now we'll see what they can do. Hey, all they need is the field goal, but I'll tell you this. Darrell Price Dick comes in at running back. He replaces the injured kicks, so he's in that backfield. He's got a burst. He's a true freshman. Silmar High School, LA City player of the year. He's got some talent. Ayers is slotted on the left hand side. McNown rolls the pocket left, looks down that far sideline, goes deep, and it's caught at the 30 yard line by Jimmy McElroy. The Bruins are not yet finished. Holy mackerel. Tight coverage all the way, Brent. He had, you know, the defender just couldn't relocate the football. Here it is, there's play action inside. That sour 32 on him running with him step for step. See, he's looking back. He should now, he just turns back the ball, throwing a little bit short. That's the advantage to the receiver. He can see it coming. 50 yard game. Oh. Hey, let me have a pack that game everywhere. Is yeah, this what yeah. goes on out here all the time? I don't know. Huh? Yeah. I think I'm in the whack. <laughs> First down and 10 now, the ball on the 30-yard line for McNown and the Bruins. Oh, did they stop? Fumble on the ground. The Sun Devils say they've got it. But hold on, there's no official indication. But the Sun Devils are celebrating. They've got it. Is that Bernstein again? That's oh, Price. Or is that big Sean Sueda? Watch Price fumble the ball, Dick, and we'll pick it up here on the replay. He's got it tucked. Oh, he's fumbling it in exchange. They were fumbling it before they got to the line of scrimmage. Good job of defense there by Jeremy Statt, 92, at good penetration. But he was fumbling the ball prior to the line of scrimmage. And Mr. Bernstein recovers the fumble. Brent Bernstein from Glendale, Arizona. He is the player of the game as far as Arizona State is concerned. One big play after another. Another quarterback gets a whole lot of credit all the time, and justifiably so. But Mr. Bernstein stood in there in the heat of battle when they were trailing. Now, can they hang on? 6.18 to go. Here comes Plummer, and he'll hand it off now to his freshman running back, and he gains two yards. Well, you know, a freshman running back, has, he's been in school for five weeks, going in there to carry the ball. It was, ball was not seated properly at the exchange point, the mesh point. He's bubbling it right out of his, the handoff point. Gosh, that just bounced right up quickly, didn't it? A minute ago, it was 0 for 2, now it's even. Two botched exchanges. Second down and eight, just inside of six minutes to go. Arizona State, a one-point lead because UCLA missed its fourth extra point. A personal foul after a made extra point brought it back. 
Arizona State working on the clock, pounding away at the middle. Sean Williams making the stop for the Bruins. You said Sean Williams now. Those kind of guys that have been playing well all day in there on defense. And you know, Sean Williams is a safety. He's the free safety up tackling on the line of scrimmage. So DC slips into the Major League Soccer Finals with that win today. Because we'll have that next weekend on the uh, network. Got to wonder now if Plummer's going to put the ball in the air. They just about have to here on third and long. And here it comes. Blitz on the throw. Got it. Tight end. Midfield to the 46 yard line. Check that. That was Lindsey Jackson across the middle who made that catch. A 20 yard gain for Jackson. Well, see. They ran a cluster formation with motion coming in. You'll see it from the right side of your screen. They blitz up inside. They handled. There's a blitz coming around the outside. He got rid of the ball quickly enough to go ahead and complete the pass. So an injured Bruin is down on that play. Philip Ward being tended to on that far side. 458, leading only by a point. Let me just go back and. Uh, Finish up here on the promo for Major League Soccer, and especially being here in the Los Angeles area. I read a wonderful story about this league in the Los Angeles Times. I think it was yesterday. I don't remember the writer's name, Plashki or Plashki something. It was wonderful talking about all the ethnic groups in Los Angeles that had come out to the Rose Bowl that have watched Major League Soccer. Their team now, I believe, has a chance to get into that final. They play the Wiz in Kansas City. It's the best two out of three, and that'll be carried on the uh, network. And so that. That circuit showed some life and certainly with the Latin community and it is long overdue in this country to have a major league soccer league operating and Dick you made such an interesting point to me when we were watching kickers the other day about what soccer has done for the kicking game in football. Well kids grow up kicking a ball now and, the, and the, therefore by the time they get to high school they've been playing soccer and all of a sudden they have a chance to kick a football and there's more people doing it therefore you're going to see more kids that can kick a football efficiently. We've seen more kickers kick the ball off into the end zone this year than we ever have before. Exactly. Four and a half minutes now. Plummer's going to keep it run naked over here to the left side. He's going to try to get the tight end and it is incomplete. You could call a little it. bit dangerous but maybe it was interference also. Huh? I think it was a pass off offensive interference myself that time because the tight end put his hand on the defender and shoved him back. That's a good job by Zach Romero. Good thinking but he could have been called for using the hand to push the defender away. Well let me go back on the thrifty Carlin post game report you're watching it right now folks we are past the top of the hour four and a half minutes so welcome to the thrifty some crazy minutes and plays uh, still could be ahead of a second down and ten now and here is Redmond breaking to the 40 yard line on that second down so this will be third down you know leading by a point Arizona State is going to continue to drive down and see if they can put in a touchdown here. They're not going to stop on this. No, uh -uh. they're going to keep trying to move the ball. See, they are into a different phase of their running game right now, too. They're running the counter game and pulling backside linemen and blocking down with the onside people to fill those inside gaps. If you don't allow penetration and allow those offensive linemen to pull around the point, it's a good football play. They've got to get some penetration with that defensive front if they're going to stop that series. Coach Snyder and the Sun Devils keeping that clock running. Fourth quarter, keeping the ball, leading by a point. So here's the third down. The fullback. First down, Arizona State. On the sideline and out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Jeff Polk, the 245-pound sophomore out of Tempe. And is he ever put together? Yes, he is. Pat Thompson, the offensive right guard, pulled and kicked out. You'll see him right there in the right center of your screen, number 67. He kicks out right there, and they run right up underneath him. Now, Dan Cazetto, the offensive coordinator, told me that was a new play they put in the offense this week to take advantage of this style of defense. It worked. Maybe they should have used it earlier. Now 3.40 to go. And here's the handoff at Redmond, getting a test under fire here today. And JR out of Carson. Hit by Williams. So it'll be second down and eight. Florida State big over Miami. There's Nebraska. This that's the team that the Arizona State went ahead and whacked. We saw Nebraska last week. It's hard to believe anybody could beat them. Arizona State here today showing a lot of character. Here's that counter again. 
And Redmond not going to go. Slipped the tackle and made the most of it to the 19 yard line. A good run, all things considered. But this is going to leave Arizona State with a third and six at the 254 mark. See, that time on the counter, they got some penetration there, and Wilmer came inside and made the play. Strip those linemen. Don't let them get them outside. You can make the play with the linebacker. We'll take a break and come right back. Timeout UCLA. It's fall. That means two things. Football and projects. That's why we're having the True Value kickoff kick-in sale. We're kicking it off by kicking in bonus items and extra savings. So you can get all those projects done still have time to enjoy the season. Get True Test Easy Care Paint just $9.97, our lowest price of the year. We'll kick in a poster painted by an NFL quarterback free. True Value, official hardware store of the NFL and homes everywhere. At BASF, we don't make the cooler. We make it cooler. We don't make the jeans. We make them bluer. We don't make the toys. We make them tougher. We don't make the water scooter, we make it lighter. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Their goals are as basic as a first home, an education, a secure retirement. Yet they own over half of all the stock in America. They are individual investors, and for them, nothing is more valuable than information. Today, NASDAQ is delivering news about companies, performance tracking, even tiny stock quotes, instantly. So if you're an investor who seeks vital information, you now know where to find it. 2.52 remaining here in the fourth quarter in the Rose Bowl. Arizona State leading UCLA by a point. It is third and six for the Sun Devils right now. The ball resting just inside the Bruins 19 Third yard line. Ball at the 18 yard line. High formation the look for Plummer and the Sun Devils and they run Redmond straight ahead. Oh, he's got it. First and goal. Still going. Still moving it. He moves it to the two yard line. What an effort by the freshman. Just a very simple isolation play. Lineman blocking lineman. Pull back through on the linebacker to lead the play, and they just go ahead and run it right down their throat. They haven't been able to do that all day. Now they find a way to do it, and the reverse angle shows it. And oh, excellent running. Now, this guy, too, is a true freshman. Good power, good leg drive, determination to get it into the end zone. Boy, I'll tell you, and you're going to coach him for three more years? That's going to be fun. Wow. Yeah, these Bruins have fought their guts out, but you got to give the Sun Devils some credit for coming back. 14 points in this fourth quarter. Well, you know, it's a senior offensive line up there. Roque at that tackle spot. Robertson, the center. Thompson, you talked about, Dick. Aru Gamer is only a sophomore and Murphy a junior, but basically you don't see those helmets bob. You know, one of that illegal procedure stuff as they sit down. Now, having said that, they're probably, I probably jinxed them. <laughs> but they hang in there now. And they run the freshman toward the end zone, stopped at the one yard line where it'll be second and goal. This would be a big six points for the Sun Devils. And you're so right, Brent, when you're talking about it. Where is it important to have experience? If you have an experienced offensive line like these people have, it makes such a difference that you can handle more problems. Plus, you can ask them to do more things. And the type of schemes that they use offensively at Arizona State, they ask them to do a lot of things. After watching the snake weave into the end zone, wouldn't you just say, run that naked bootleg out there, don't tell anybody, and zip on in here. Freshman to the end zone. No signal. No signal. Gonna be third and goal at 141. Feel the frustration of the Bruin defense right now. There's a flag in the end zone over there on the end. It's a yellow flag on the on the gold end. You can't see it. There's a state indicating that it's against the uh, Bruins. The ball was 
short of the goal line. It was a dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First, first down. down, first down. 1.39 to go and a first and goal. Oh, Bobby, I tell you, nobody's immune. I know it, but that must hurt. Must hurt. The kids played so well. You did a great job of preparing a team that was a big underdog. And hey, th you're going to win a lot of football games as a head coach of the UCLA Bruins. Maybe Jake will just put that saddle on Kirk Robertson and say, giddy up. You know, the only thing that surprised me about Snyder is it took him five years to get it done. 5 and 0 at the end of five years at Cal. He's 5 and 0 coming into this after five years at Arizona State. But he said he had to start over after going into his third year there. That's his MO. It took him three quarters today. <laughs> All right, here's Kirk now. Straight up, bangs into the end zone, and there's the touchdown for Arizona State. Put six more on the board. It's a crazy game. You just absolutely never, never know. Do you? Just a few minutes ago, we were showing the standings, thinking about UCLA being tied for first. And what they ought to do to eat up the clock? Just bingo like that. Fumble the ball. Fumble the ball. Two, Two fumbles. exchange, exchange fumbles. fumbles. Okay? Should never happen. And ASU took advantage. Let's give them yeah. all the credit in the world. They turned both of those turnovers into touchdowns. Both Jake Plummer runs for touchdowns. The first, he received a halfback action pass. And now, Robert Neese adds the extra point, and it is 42 34. And here is Plummer from Boise, Idaho. He was met with resistance there by the middle of the. You've got to really feel for the Bruins who play oh, the high parts out here. Sure. Yeah. No question. It's still going to be tough. It's still going to be tough for a team in the Pac-10 to go through it undefeated. Well, Jake Plummer has another great day in a comeback mode. Well, let's give our Chevrolet MVPs. And I know for a lot of you, Jake Plummer's an automatic MVP, and certainly he authored the most exciting play of the day. But let's pick out a fell in the trenches who when they were down 21 7 he kept deflecting balls and he recovered the most the last fumble of the day we should say so we want to pick out a defensive fellow Bernstein because Jake the Snake gets all the credit in the world and Cade McNown the UCLA quarterback stepped up in there and he threw for a career high it was a heck of a comeback performance by the Sun Devils and now the Bruins only eight back. Down, and they're 80 yards away with 118 to go. Remember with the two-point two point conversion? Goal. They're still not out of this, and here they come. 21, 37, 388 yards. No interceptions, right? No PIs. Heck of a job done by this guy, and heck, all he is is a true sophomore. Got a lot of time to win some big games here in Bruin. Incomplete. Second and ten. One fifteen. Mm. Just the time left in this game. Partner, we had ourselves a good one here today. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's over. I mean, it, 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 we felt it was over a few times here, and all of a sudden it's changing. Boy, he's done a good job. I think he's got the Bruins playing hard. He's playing with emotion. He's going to sag that zone now. There's McNown. Incomplete, and it is third down with 108 left on that clock right now. As Alan Borges, the offensive coordinator, there, giving him a little positive affirmation there, pumping it up.
game plan card. He's got it all mapped out, knows exactly where to look on the card and what to call off the card. Move the tight end over in position to block Rogers. Bernstein coming in from behind. Got it. Fires complete, gets it off in time to the 36 yard line. And Danny Farmer is the receiver. Block stops while they move the chains. They're getting lined up. One minute to go. Two timeouts. It's going to be a long minute. Coach Snyder down there says, come on, wind that clock up and let's go. Now the countdown begins. Down. Down for the shotgun. Steps over to the left-hand side. Bernstein. Brings him down timeout. at the 35 yard line, a one yard loss. They call the timeout, stop the clock. Well, again, let me remind you that this is the regional lineup next week, 12:30 out here on the Pacific Network. So you will be seeing the USC Arizona State. If there's another game you'd like, call the cable operators or find someone with a little dish or whatever and some of you folks who came in a little bit late and uh, missed some scores we'll rifle these through a and m holds off troy davis and iowa state by three been a tough year for them right now they played their hearts out the bruins did 44 seconds left Fumbles here in the fourth quarter that turned the game around completely. And, and you know, simple kind of exchanges. I mean, not difficult, not where you're faking to one guy and reverse pivoting and handing it to another guy. Just direct handoff problems. So the final 44 seconds. Real loose coverage. Second down at 11. Dash. McNown waiting for a receiver. Hit as he releases. Goes deep to airs. Intercepted at the 10 yard line by Jason Simmons of Hawthorne, California. This baby's all over. They tried to get the ball to Derek Ayers on a little stopper hook and go or out and go type move. And normally against a defense at that time in the ball game at this, you aren't going to get a corner that's going to jump up and acknowledge that kind of a move. And then he could never catch up coming out of that little move. He couldn't catch up with the corner. So Jason's right there in position to make the interception. They can just flop her on. Three Bruin turnovers in the fourth quarter on three consecutive possession. And Arizona State lives to play unbeaten again. They go to 6 and 0. Oh, and Monday night, a reminder, 6 p.m. out here, Pacific time, a dandy. The 49ers go in an underdog. When's the last time they've been that big a dog? Are the Packers that good? Well, we'll find out come Monday night. Final seconds tick away. Jack Aroot, Dick Vermeil, I'm Brad Musburger. We hope you enjoyed it. It was a great performance by the Snake. And Bruce Snyder says, hold that until January 1st. I'd like to come back here and play one more time. And Coach Toledo and the Bruins did a mighty job. 42 34. If you missed a score in college football, America Online, the keyword ABC Sports. Arizona State a winner again. So long, everybody. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. The truth about Clinton on taxes? Remember? I will not raise taxes on the middle class. But he gave the middle class the largest tax increase in history. Higher taxes on your salary, gasoline, Social Security. Clinton even tried higher taxes on heating your home. 255 proposed tax and fee increases in all. Clinton says... But I don't think that that qualifies me as a closet. Sorry, Mr. Clinton. Actions do speak louder than words. The real Bill Clinton.
a real spend and tax liberal. In the world of tools, there's only one true craftsman. Craftsman makes anything possible. Oh, yeah. I will be the president who preserves and strengthens and protects Medicare. I was there, fighting the fight, voting against Medicare, one of 12, because we knew it wouldn't work. Last year, Dole Gingrich tried to cut Medicare, 270 billion. Give children a chance in life. Give them an education. We're going to eliminate the Department of Education. We don't need it in the first place. I didn't vote for it in 1979. Dole tried to slash college scholarships. Voting against Medicare. Wrong in the past. We're going to eliminate the Department of Education. Wrong for our future. Never in history have so many recognized and respected journalists gathered in one place at one time. That time is now. That place is ABC News. No wonder more Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. You're watching KNXV TV Phoenix, seen on these translators. We now join our program already in progress. <laughs> 